three, two, one. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the official podcast episode Jackson, 281. Jackson, you should do the intro. You brought the guest. Yeah, brought, yeah, I am doing the intro. Why do you, you have to make the to intro you. so fucking awkward every week? I'm so sick of this little, this little shtick. Uh, yes, so this week we have bought the popular... It's okay, just take it from the much top. much requested... All right, yeah. I'm sick of this. I'm, I'm leaving Jackson, this show. breathe. Goodbye. I know, you're, I know you're nervous. I know you're nervous. This is, this is our first main episode without Charlie, so I know that oh. you're nervous. I know you're sweating, your hands are trembling, you're going to vomit, but it, dude, just... Just, like, take it slowly. We have a guest. You don't want to embarrass yourself, do you? <laughs> All right. So, welcome to the show, Mr. Wendigoon. Muchly requested. Uh, seriously, like, I've seen so many requests for you. And we've received, like, DMs and stuff requesting you onto the show. So, this is, like, a big it's deal for us. And it's a... Oh, well, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the show. I think you guys are hilarious, so it really does mean a lot for you guys to invite me on. I greatly appreciate it. And it is kind of fitting, because a bunch of people say I look like generic version Charlie, or like Walmart version mm -hmm. Charlie. So this kind of just, you know, lined up perfectly. So happy to be here. And mysteriously, like Andrew said, he is not here at the same yeah. time. Yeah, so that's you, really weird. Got like a Superman situation going on. <laughs> kind of yeah, weird you've never seen me and Charlie in the same room, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You sound just like him, too. It's like, I can't even tell yeah, him This is throwing me for a loop. I don't know what's happening. I'm, I'm just Charlie with more banjo music, so, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that wasn't a joke before? You actually play the banjo? No, no, no. I just meant that I'm Southern, like Appalachian. Oh, right. right. But yeah, banjo's right, right, just right. an easy joint to hit, but yeah. <laughs> well, we, we were talking about that the other week. Technically, Charlie is the most Southern of anyone in uh, America, because Florida goes all the way down, right? So that's pretty... That's yeah. Pretty See, Southern's... Florida's kind of like a wormhole, because, like, you're driving through the South... And it's like, uh, you know, shotgun, shotgun, Confederate flag, shotgun, and then retirement homes. And that's when you know you hit Florida. <laughs> so when yeah, again, I, think, I think you'll agree with this. And I think I brought this up on the podcast. But the ironic part of Florida is the more north in Florida you go, the more the south it becomes. Yes, correct. A hundred percent. So it's it, super you weird. Can, like, you can tell where it starts because I want to say not Jacksonville, but like whenever you start going down the actual point of florida like mainland mm -hmm. florida on the panhandle that's just alabama only hotter with beaches right <laughs> but as soon as yeah. you pass that crest going down the highway and you start seeing palm trees you're suddenly in like northern south america it's like a switch flip yeah it's so weird so the way the way that i've always described it is there are three floridas and they are very different <laughs> there's north florida <laughs> central florida and south florida and they are three different states yes, combined 100%. into one state north florida is the south central florida is florida like Orlando and Tampa That's Disney and all World. that Disney, stuff. Disney, Disney World. World. Yeah, Disney World. <laughs> it's, Florida, it's just Disney it's, America. It's, it's right. Disney America. It's Florida proper. Right. And then the South is Little Cuba. Yes, it's, exactly. It's Spanish. Spanish yep. America. Yeah. I. Uh, so it's funny. I stayed in Southern Florida for uh, a couple weeks last year. And like I remember stopping in Northern Florida to get gas and there was, like, Confederate flags hung up everywhere and a bunch of, like, Trump 2024, all that stuff. And then you get in the truck, and then I drive and then stopped again in southern Florida, and all the gas stations were in Spanish. Like, yep. <laughs> it's yeah, just, that's like, Florida. a total switch. It's wild. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Florida's something else. Florida's, like, a bunch of people, like, brag about being from the south and, like, the pride that comes with it. But, man, if you survive growing up in Florida, that is, like, a testament. <laughs> Is that serious? Is like Florida like the most bragworthy state in the country in terms it's, of upbringing? It is in the term of survivability. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like every day is like full of danger. Yeah, like if you come out and you're like a functioning member of society and not oh. like a gator wrestler, like you know all the jokes about Florida man. Yeah, like mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah. the culture down there. Like if someone wrestling a gator to like get a free bingo card is just a Saturday <laughs> for them. It's absurd. So, uh, it, wait, if if Florida is mostly full of, like, retirement homes, and, like, that's the experience that I've heard, or tourists because of Disney World and such, right. why, why does it get that kind of attitude? Why do people go to those kinds of extremes in Florida? So does anyone have a like, reason? 
when you drive through Florida, you can see it because you'll be going down. (laughs) It's all flat for one, right? There's no hills or mountains or anything. So you're just driving. You can see all the way out to the horizon. And it's like, oh, look, we're at the beach. And there's like, you know, palm tree. This is actually the experience I had when I was down there. You're like, oh, we're at the beach. And there's palm trees and there's guests. And oh, uh, at the outside of the beach, there's a little villa that's like the retirement homes. And then you drive for like 10 more minutes. And traffic is stopped because there's a group of alligators crossing the highway. Um, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> like, that's it's, cute. It, it's like having... Um, your civilized society on the fringe of the outer worlds. Like, <laughs> if you go a little <laughs> bit inland, it becomes a uh, player versus player situation. Um, uh, yeah, so it's yeah. like the wilderness in RuneScape. I don't know if you played RuneScape, but yeah, there's yeah, a section I, I, in RuneScape. I'm familiar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the wilderness. It's like that, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. It, it's hilarious, though. So, yeah, if you, like, grew up in Florida and you're normal now, that is the true, like, I survived testament. Can you escape Florida, though, or does it always go with you? Are you, like, branded as a Floridian if you uh, go to other states and then knowing, people, like, distance themselves? Knowing friends of mine who grew up in Florida, I can tell they're from Florida before they tell me. Because <laughs> there's just, it's like, just an I don't aura know. that permeates. Yeah, it's the, the like, you stand too close. Yeah, you stay, <laughs> you stay so too you, close to them. What's you your typical like- reaction if you're, like, near a Floridian or conversing with one? What do you do? Um... Always have a weapon in arm's reach. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. Whenever, an like... Escape plan. Escape plan, yeah. Um, normally, I, I guess what it is where I've hung out with, like, guys who are from Florida, they'll casually bring up wild scenarios like they're not a big deal. And that's what tips me off to them being in Florida. Like, I have one friend of mine, for example, uh, who I didn't know was from Florida. And in one of our first conversations with each other, he was like, yeah, I remember when I was, like, five or six... Um, there was a trailer park next to my neighborhood where they would get into fiberglass um, light battles <laughs> or halogen light battles. Yeah, and yeah. They would, like, oh, yeah. Was it shadow super easy? The, yeah. the sport of Florida, yeah. Yeah, the sport of Florida, yeah. And he says that to me and I go, are you from Florida? And he went, yeah, how'd you know? So stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how they settle like, uh, I don't know, presidential debates in Florida when, whenever they need to... <laughs> Oh, like choose a new school. senator or something they just put him in yeah, mm-hmm. in the middle of a <laughs> that's how you determine if a bill becomes a law <laughs> he takes his, <laughs> is it all formal too one takes his glove off and slaps mm-hmm. the other one in the face with it I challenge you to a duel sir and then they just fucking wrestle in a white trash trailer park it doesn't It doesn't sound like there's any <laughs> honor in Florida <laughs> but they do wear suits oddly enough yes yeah <laughs> there's their own code of honor like like, it used to be duels where, you know, take 10 paces and then, you know, turn and fire. But now duels in Florida are like, grab as many light bulbs as you can from Home Depot and meet me at the trailer park. Um, same spirit, really. Yeah, that's that's called a Florida snowball fight. <laughs> <laughs> you just get all the light bulbs you can. You make a little fort. You start chucking them. It's good times. Yeah, wait, actually, you're right. There is no snow in Florida. It's too far south. That's that's what you oh have to do. So yeah. hot Windigoon. and gross. So, Wendigoon, I don't know how much you want to dox yourself, but it, which state are you in or a specific region of the South? I'm from Tennessee. Uh, still Tennessee, okay. Down. So, do, okay, I, I think Tennessee, does Tennessee get snow at all? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, yeah. Normally, I, every okay. year we'll get some. It's very mm-hmm. rare that it's like a debilitating amount of snow. That normally happens I once just, every like eight years right. or something. Yeah. I thought so it was just like to, New York up, that like those states, like the north... What is it? The Northwest? Those kinds of states? That's the Northeast. That Northeast, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Like Michigan and such? No, mo- a lot of our states get snow. Most of them do. We, like, um, if, you, if you look at the U.S. on a globe, like the entire country's pretty far north comparatively. Um, mm-hmm. So like Tennessee will still get snow. It's just normally not a lot of snow. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I brought that up and I wanted to double check on the snow thing because I don't know if you've ever experienced the like fake snow that they do for the South. Maybe when yes. you were a kid. Yes. What do you mean? Fake <laughs> snow? Yeah, that is that shit is the most pathetic like fantasy <laughs> fulfillment I've ever seen in my life. So anyone out there listening who's grown up in the South of the United States, like any Southern state, especially ones that don't have any snow like Florida, 
um, you'll know that very often when wintertime rolls around, the parents are like, well, we want the kids to have snow because it'll be fun <laughs> and like a winter wonderland. And, you know, like it's it's winter. They got to have snow. So what they'll do is they'll get like a snowmaking machine. Which just kind of powders ice and then sprays it out all over the fucking grass. Why? And they'll make a singular hill about with it, Ugh. and they'll be like, "Go slide down the ice, yay!" Wee. And Aww. it's the most like pathetic and not snow thing because it's fucking America jagged is... and hard and uncomfortable. If it, America it is full of states where snow actually happens, why not just drive two hours north or something? No, no, Jackson, you have to get a big, complicated gas spewing <laughs> machine. To cover your lawn in slush. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. that, I live fairly close to uh, Gatlinburg, um, mm -hmm. which Gatlinburg has a giant ski resort on top of it that whenever there's not snow, they pretty much cover the entire mountaintop with like fake snow to some degree. So normally if like kids want to see snow, that's where their parents take them. However, I do have memories of my friends like at middle school they'd roll out one of those machines and spray them. And it was always a game with the kids of who could stand the closest to it without chickening out because it was basically like getting <laughs> sandpaper blasted into your face out of a machine gun. <laughs> so, like, the, the boys would be inching towards it, screaming. <laughs> as their faces yeah, getting chipped. Yeah, it fucking sucks. Ice. Yeah. It fucking it's just sucks, ice, man. Yeah. <laughs> they, make, awesome. they make that giant hill, and they're like, it's snow. It's like, no, it's fucking just a bag of ice you got at 7-Eleven. Like, well, that's that shit hurts. snow is. What's the difference, yeah, really? and they're trying Trying to make the best of Snow's it. What just can you do? Sky ice. I the, know, but even as a make... little kid, I could tell. I'm, I'm bringing this up because I did that multiple times through multiple years of my like childhood, <laughs> and every time I knew, I was like, "This isn't real snow. This sucks." Ah. <laughs> well, no one's no one's <laughs> saying it's real snow, Andrew. Yes, they are. Like That's some the genius. point, Jackson. They put <laughs> no, a they're not saying it's you'll real snow. A, you'll have a church or some other community function, and they'll put up flyers and they'll be like, we're going to have a snow day in Florida. Whoa! <laughs> and you know they're going to get out the giant fucking fluffy ice machine that just sprays it all over the church lawn, and it sucks. It's exactly uh, Andrew, what they Having do. been in Florida and, like... It's so hot that I would take that deal. Yeah. I would settle for it. I'm fine. Like, blast me in the <laughs> face with ice shards. I would take... The Do you guys think maybe, like, Floridians are just crazy because it is that hot and the citizenry, they have to live from AC to AC, basically. Like, you get out of your car and you have to sprint inside oh, the house lest I your brain you fries. Like, if you yeah, stop yeah, to do your... Like, if you stop to tie fried. your shoes, you just I fucking go crazy from the heat. Melt. So, I have a theory about why Florida is the way that it is. Um, so, like, humanity over, like, you know, centuries of establishment has gone from, like, you know, man-to-man -man survival to, like, now we can pretty much thrive and survive in society as it's created. We don't have to worry about, like, the wilderness or, you know, running out of food or anything like that. That has applied to everywhere in, like, you know, the United States except for Florida. Um, when I was in Florida... I watched a guy, he was fishing, and he reeled in uh, his pole, and there's a little baby gator next to him, and he just looked down at it and kicked it. Oh. And, I, and, and I just stared at that, I'm like, that man has lived more of, like, the raw instincts of yeah. life than anyone I've ever met. <laughs> I, I, well, mean. to some degree, maybe, but like, if your instinct is to kick a gator, <laughs> I think your instincts are a bit off as well. well. You, gotta, you gotta curb their aggressive behavior early. It was probably his pet. You can't That's true. have it just sitting there, like doing that. You know that gator thing they do? That like. <sighs> just you can't, at you. That, that's a sign of aggression. You can't have him doing that. Yeah, that's not good. His boss. Yeah, that way when you bring it home with your like wife and small baby. It won't decide to have a midnight snack when you're not looking. <laughs> so, were you saying that maybe Florida is just one place in the world that's not meant to be inhabited? Maybe it's <laughs> a like little, cursed? a little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's actually true that um, right after the Civil War, or actually, sorry, right before the Civil War, um, whenever the like westward expansion was essentially killing and chasing out all the Native Americans, a group of Native Americans went to Florida. And the uh, military left them there because they said, quote, no one in their right mind could survive that harsh land. Uh, yeah. And nothing has changed. <laughs> when our when our fucking parents were growing up, especially like our Florida Alpins. parents, they would talk about how, hey, yeah, we live here in Florida and everywhere south of us is just swamp. Yep. 
Like, there were parts of Florida as recently as like the fucking 60s and 70s where it was just uninhabitable. It was just swampland. <laughs> you could not live there. And then they built it and expanded it and kept pushing south. <laughs> I, right. um, when I stayed there in Florida, I was staying like pretty close to uh, what what beach is that near Miami? Uh, Probably Fort, Miami Beach. No, no, it's on, it's on the Gulf side. Fort um, Myers or Fort Fort Myers. Yeah, yeah. For, I was near Fort Myers. And uh, I was, like, near a subdivision. Like, this wasn't, you know, Florida, Florida quite yet. And there was a little canal in the backyard, so I was just fishing. And while I was fishing, a log floated by. And I was like, oh, it's a big log. And then I, like, focus on it, and it was just an alligator. Like, five feet from me. <laughs> you... I'm like, that, that is horrifying. <laughs> so this was one trip? All these experiences were from one trip? Yeah, this was, like, uh, we were pretty close to the... Uh, uh, what do they call it down there? Like the wetlands of Florida. The Everglades. The Everglades? Was, yeah, we, the Everglades. we drove through the Everglades oh, a lot, which okay. is where I saw most of that. Because yeah. I was, I was going to say, you've seen more alligators in this one trip than I have in my entire life. Dude, well, <laughs> well so while I was there, I went to, it's like the Skunk Ape Museum, uh, which Skunk Ape's like a big Florida, you know, urban legend. So I went yeah. to the museum, which is in the middle of the Everglades. Like you just drive on a bridge over it most of the way. Uh, and they had an alligator uh, preserve there. So, like, you could see him in cages, but it didn't really mean a lot because on the way there, like, looking over the bridge, you just saw dozens of them just floating across mm -hmm. the water. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, man, these guys really have to fight for it, don't they? <laughs> just to this, stay alive. This genuinely just sounds like my state of Australia. Like, I oh, live well, in Queensland. The entirety is of Australia state. is a PVE <laughs> experience. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dude. but we have the cooler alligators. We have crocodiles, which are a bit more extreme. Not to brag or anything. So they're, they're they're more brag. Brag. We have both, Jackson, you dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> Wait, do you, do you seriously have crocodiles? The Everglades is the only habitat on the world, I believe, where alligators and crocodiles coexist. Jesus, what if they breed? I would love to see that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't crocodiles way more aggressive? I think so. I'm not, yeah, I think they. I yeah. think saltwater. I'm. I'm not sure what kind of crocodile you have in Florida, but saltwater crocodiles are like the largest uh, type of whatever those species are, like yeah. crocodiles and alligators, and they're the most aggressive. I'm, yeah, I'm that fairly makes sure. Sense. They're the ones that live in like Africa as well, and like mm, yeah. Cape Town. Do you see them, a lot, Jackson? Uh, I'm a bit south in my state. I'm. I'm more towards. Um, uh, like the southern border of my state, which doesn't really have many crocodiles. But if you go up north, you see them a lot. Like just just walking down the street, you'll see them. That's and, cool. And they they one of our politics, but uh, one of our politicians recently. Uh, <laughs> they uh, the reporters. It was during an election cycle. The reporters asked him about um, his thoughts on like gay marriage and stuff, and he. he he answered, and in the answer, he he tan like tangented into talking about the crocodile epidemic <laughs> that's currently going on in Queensland, and saying how the real focus needs to be on the crocodiles because they're getting that bad. Jackson, it seems like every ten years, your entire country has a new animal to hate. Yeah, well, no, crocodiles have been around for millions of years. First no, of all, no, so no, they've no, always no. been like, as an It's uprising. Australia specifically. And yeah, you guys like it's Australia specifically. You had a you had a whole emu war, and then there was the whole problem with fucking koalas and they're burning to death, and you need to hate them because they're so stupid. Then you have <laughs> crocodiles. Well, the reason we hated koalas was because they 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 were giving us STDs somehow. Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, hold on. I've had what? questions about that. I keep hearing that, and I need you to justify why that is. <laughs> I I. I can't tell you the science behind it. All I know is like their saliva and their urine is they're able to transmit. I think it's chlamydia yeah, through it's, it. It's so not, why if, are if you, you get koala piss them? on you, but, well, not kissing them when they urinate when they pee. Sometimes if if you're handling them, which you're not meant to do, but if like someone handles them, they'll pee on you. Did, don't you remember the whole thing? I think it was like Harry Styles or someone. I think it was One Direction when they were over in Australia. There was a scare because one of the koalas that they were holding during a zoo visit urinated on them. And there was a legitimate, <laughs> a legitimate risk that a koala might have given Harry Styles chlamydia. 
Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. I don't want anything bad to happen to him, but that would be hilarious. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was Harry Styles. It, it might have been a, this a different boy then. in Harry Styles as <laughs> Koala Chlamydia. I may oh, have that, just yeah, landed the, in the headlines, man. man. The headlines would just go nuts <laughs> with that. Oh. That, see, that, that's what I mean. Like Australia, like Florida too, but Australia more so. Everywhere else in the world's hyper focused on, you know, like, you know, politics and like opinion Civilization. pieces. Yeah. And mm-hmm. meanwhile, Australia is like, all right, the crocodiles have to stop killing us. <laughs> Can we all yeah. agree? And the <laughs> emus have to stop eating our farmlands or something. So we'll send two guys in a truck out into the bush to <laughs> mow down as many emus as we can. <laughs> Well, it's apparently, so funny that they had to retreat. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's biggest embarrassment. Well, you're on luck, though, but uh, because koalas are apparently an endangered species currently, but your scientists are apparently working on freezing koala sperm to uh, preserve the species. So I, I guess future generations. Well, yeah, they're can ridiculously still... cute. They are. They're so adorable. I don't Aren't like they the mean? They're like frying in a wildfire. I. Um, I don't know. I, the, the only ones that I've ever had hands-on experience have been ones at zoos. So I don't know how okay. that translates because I, I worked at a zoo at some point. Um, you did? But, oh, so you could yeah, but, possibly yeah. have chlamydia you, or HIV. I was about to ask. Yeah. Are you talking about your mom's house when she brought in like 40 wild <laughs> yeah. animals? <laughs> yeah. my, my mom has an animal collecting habit that's a bit <laughs> crazy. We've talked about that in the past. But she had yeah, a koala? No, 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 no. It's illegal uh, to own uh, native animals like that. Uh, <clears throat> what, uh... I'm trying to think what else... Do you guys have giant spiders, right? Are those, like, a reoccurring problem? Uh, not a problem. They're not... They don't, like, get in your way or anything. But, yeah, they'll be in, like, rooms that you enter into in your home, <laughs> oh, usually. No. There'll be one <laughs> like I, Just, like, what? two nights ago... Two nights ago, I went in uh, late at night after recording uh, to go to the toilet, and I just look up, and there's a spider the size of my hand on the roof, just chilling, oh. looking down at me. <laughs> but they, they they never get in the way or anything, and they're usually good for like insects and stuff. They never so. get in the way. That that is yeah. the so most Stockholm oh. syndrome response I've ever heard. <laughs> I said, yeah, "Are they a treating- problem?" And you go, "Yeah." He goes, "No, they're just in my house." <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so you're basically I never treating understood them like the fear a of spiders. farm cat. Where you just keep them around to catch all the cockroaches and shit? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's exactly what they're good for. They, they keep flies out of the house. They keep mosquitoes out. Any kind of, like, an actually annoying insects. So they're kind of cool to have around. And they're, they're not aggressive or anything. If you don't, like, go and touch them, then they're not going to hurt you. Although, having said that, there was one time when I was about six years old where I woke up in the middle of the night and there was a spider on my head. Oh my and that kind of scared me. Oh my word. <laughs> oh God, that made that me actually faint. Made me flinch. <laughs> Are they Is it poisonous? like one of the huntsmen? Like the big ones? Uh, no, I think it was just a small... Uh, I, they're called Daddy Long Legs over here. I'm not sure if that's the oh, actual... Okay. Of course they are. The actual word. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they are called daddy long legs here as well, and they're not bad. Mm-hmm. So that's more. yeah. Aren't those yeah, harmless okay. spiders? They're yeah. harmless, but I've oh, heard. I, I don't know how true this is. I don't know how true this is, but I've heard that they're only harmless because their legs are so long that they can't reach down to bite you, and they're actually <laughs> extremely venomous. <laughs> so if they were able to bite you, you'd be in trouble, but they can't. But I, I've heard can't that a lot right. too growing up. Yeah, it's a it's an urban legend that I think actually oh, okay. got started from a movie. That got made years back, if I remember. I thought correctly. you were gonna say it got started by like a daddy long legs that wanted to kill as many people as it could. <laughs> that can't uh, be true because evolutionarily, that there just doesn't make sense for them to evolve to a point where they can't kill stuff. Well, maybe it evolved to help them kill. I don't know, flying insects more. They're uh, so daddy long legs. Uh, their correct names, like the or like the scientific whatever name forms, harvest men, and. Um, they are not even a spider, I don't think. I think they're in the same classification that, like, ticks are. That they're still kind of mm. arachnid, but not, like, you know, a direct spider. No, they're spider. posers. Yeah, they're posers, pretty much. So um, they're just ticks with long legs. Pretty much. That, that's, that's, that's disgusting. That actually has made them more scarier to me, yeah. I don't like that. I don't like ticks. <laughs> you don't like they ticks, but harmless. you're okay with the giant spider in your house. Yeah, well, ticks are, like, annoying. They, like... Steal your blood and shit. They, you know they actually attach annoying? themselves to you. A giant spider in your house. Yeah, <laughs> well, they don't fair, attack you, dude. Yeah, but to be fair, like ticks, 
your whole life you grow up being told that you have to check your feet for ticks and shit after you're taking a walk in the woods because you don't even know if you have them and then they give you fucking diseases and shit. They're like stealthy mm-hmm. killers. I hate ticks. Yeah, yeah and, and they'll, fuck they'll ticks. kill your pets and stuff as well because they'll spread diseases and such. Around here, uh, the ticks can carry Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain yeah. Spotted Fever. And uh, mm-hmm. I think, I'm pretty sure it's Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. I could be wrong. But it leaves a lasting effect in your body even after you have it. So my girlfriend's dad got bit by a tick a while back and got sick and got over it. But for the rest of his life, he has a red meat allergy just because he got bit what? by a tick. What? Okay, there wow. are such a okay, weird this, like, correlation. Sucks. This, yeah. this is now the scariest beast on the planet to me. Kill all ticks. They're, they're actually that's that's actually pretty common. Uh, I know a lot of common? I, for a while. What? I had like stomach issues, and I was afraid that that was what happened. That I got it. Yeah. So ticks- it's such a weird correlation to me. It's like if a tick bit me, and then I couldn't smell roses or something. It's like that doesn't even make sense. It yeah, has, like I can't. What's the process here? How does it happen? It has something to do. So like I I remember having it explained to me in biology classes in college, but the short version is that it has something to do with the disease that is carried, which again, I think is Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, it leaves behind an imprint to where your body can't like digest certain protein or amino acids that are found in uh, red meats, I believe. So essentially you have an allergic reaction to them because you can't process Holy them. Holy fuck. shit. That's, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that so like is... not only is it don't get bit by a tick, you'll get sick. It's like if you ever want to eat a hamburger again... <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's say, literally like a tick that creates vegans or vegetarians. Yeah. So needless terrifying. to say, your girlfriend's dad shot himself, right? <laughs> so <laughs> they, uh, they have medication for it that as long as you eat it, whenever you eat red meat, you should be fine. So it's funny, you'll see a lot of like uh, older guys around the region, like they'll sit down, eat a steak, take two pills and then start eating the steak. <laughs> I think your dad maybe isn't adventurous enough. Maybe he's got to find the other tick that has the antidote. (laughs) And then find the next tick that gives him, like, super speed or something. We should start testing out these ticks. I would take the other way around. If a tick gave me an allergy to salads, I would have an excuse, you know? Sorry, Mom, I can't finish my salad. I'm allergic. <laughs> yeah, what you've you got six? a bunch of picky children in the wild right now trying to get bit by ticks. That it's like, oh, where's the broccoli tick? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, hand me the green beans tick. They're like little loot boxes. <laughs> hand me the green beans. Yeah, they're negative tick. loot boxes. Open <laughs> ring talismans. You just attach them to your it's ass. A, it's a permanent debuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're all. Yeah, ticks have always scared me. To anything that steals your blood, or uh, yeah, like that process of stealing your blood anyway, like mosquitoes, ticks, leeches, uh, leeches all mm-hmm. of those. Uh, yeah, those are the things that terrify me the most out of out of anything in the animal kingdom, or I suppose anything that causes like prion disease as well. Like, isn't there like uh, brain eating amoeba and stuff like that? Yeah, I'm not sure if that counts as an animal, but th- that's that's where the the uh, true threat lies, not with the spiders. The spiders are fine. Mm. I, I'm once again saying that that sounds like someone with Stockholm Syndrome, but I do see your point. <laughs> it, it sounds like you're in the pocket of Big Spider. Like, what is this propaganda? You're <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's been perpetuating their lies. Um, That's a real conspiracy. That, yeah, I know. There's that brain <laughs> amoeba. Uh, oh, the one thing we have around here that's really freaky if you're not familiar with it is chronic wasting disease have you ever heard of it i've heard of it mm, but it i know it's scary vaguely. but i would love for you to i mean it sounds terrifying yeah re so, rejog our memories because that i i've heard of it it's not great so it is a prion disease um that is mostly i think exclusively found in deer populations uh that they'll get from like drinking water or uh like eating something that had that carried the prion even if it wasn't showing signs of it and in deer the prion goes to their brain and causes these massive warts and tumors to grow all over their body like it looks like straight up the last of us clickers like over their face and over their mouth and everything and the deer begins to go insane it starts like trying to walk around on two legs uh, the deer, <laughs> there's one story, uh, of a deer that started bashing its head against a rock and then started 
licking up the blood. Like, it makes them go complete out of their mind. They look like these gross zombies. And they've Holy been fuck. known to charge and attack humans whenever they're in that state. That's so, terrifying. Yeah, it's straight up that zombie That genuinely plague. is a zombie Isn't outbreak, it? but it's, for deers. It's a deer So they could happen plague. to us. I, I could be wrong, it, but also, can't you get it from them if you eat the meat? You can get it from them if you eat the meat. I don't think it shows the same symptoms. I just think you get really, really sick, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, but I want to bash I, my head on a rock. What I vaguely <laughs> remember is that Sean's awesome. diseases are like so fucked up that even when you thoroughly cook the meats, you don't kill it. It's yeah. terrifying. So yeah. there's diseases, no way to there's no way to like solve it or fix it or like stop it from happening as well, right? They're just like. They just exist. Yeah, once someone gets it, I mean, that's pretty much game over. Because all a prion is, is a misbent protein. I believe it's a protein. Um, so, like, what are you going to do? Like, it's just a structure. It's not a virus or something you can kill. It's just in your body. Uh, mad cow disease is the same way, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, prion disease is, like, the only way to treat them is to not get them. And if you get them, then it's <laughs> GG, pretty much. Fuck, that's terrifying. <laughs> Oh, I hate that. I hate thinking about uh, that. Classic <laughs> diseases. <laughs> Can we talk about something real quick that isn't like Depressing. disgustingly harmful yeah. or detrimental or terrible or uh, makes finally. us feel bad? Can we talk about something that makes us feel good, please? Yes, for sure, Andrew. Please take Such a as lead. athletic greens. Mm. Let's talk about athletic greens. Ah, uh, yes, athletic greens. Are you taking enough? Are you putting enough things in your body? Your body needs a lot of things. Vitamins and minerals and proteins and macros and whatever the shit. It doesn't matter. Because with athletic greens and their delicious premium scoop of AG1, you're going to be absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients that'll support gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, and aging, and all the things you can ever personally imagine. Look, I don't go outside much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit that. I'm a big, stupid nerd. I sit inside. I'm watching Dragon Ball Super right now yes feel bad for me pity me but your subscription at home is going to come with a year's supply of vitamin d as well if you're getting into athletic greens and that's super important because if you don't look at the sun that much well you're going to need some vitamin d now ain't ya it's going to cost you less than three dollars a day to invest in your health and it's going to be cheaper than your fun little starbucks coffee habit you're also going to notice that Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews, and it's been recommended by professional athletes. Oh boy, right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop in one cup of water a day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills, and God, no need to do anything. You can drink something. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash the official. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash the official. Make sure to put the the in front of there. That's important. And you can also take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. If you remember that little code. And yeah, oh God, speaking of codes... There's a code. There's a code amongst men. The code is shave something. Well, maybe your pubic hair or testicles. You can shave your face if you want to be a weirdo, but everyone knows beards are just the best goddamn thing on the planet. But you should probably shave some other part of your body. And if you're going to go down to your penis's lawn patch, well, you're going to want to check out Manscaped. They're going to bring you the Performance Package 4.0. It's going to have the signature lawnmower 4.0. It's an electric trimmer. It's designed to work on loose skin. It's got skin-safe technology. You're not going to want to hurt yourself. You're not going to want to cut yourself. And a grooming routine isn't complete without their Crop Preserver Crop Reviver before showing off your brand new 2022 self. Complete the set 
and do it by just purchasing one thing, because Manscaped's also gonna throw in the Shed Travel Bag with anti-chafing boxer briefs as free gifts just for looking at your pubic hair and saying, no, get out of here. Kick discomfort and poor hygiene to the curb this year and use the best tools for the job. Whether your new year's been full of places to go or work to do, you can be sure to travel with Manscaped and go to manscaped.com for our exclusive offer of 20% off and free shipping with code official. That's 20% off and free shipping on the only tools that you're going to need to clean yourself up down there with code official. 20% off, free shipping, code official at manscaped.com. New year, no pubes in 2022 with Manscaped. But you're buying these things. You're purchasing these things. You're buying into the capitalist machine. You're saying, my credit card is my life and soul. You can have it, but don't be so hasty. Why don't you like take some inventory a bit on what you're buying? Why don't you take a little breather and go, wait, 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 I know that you need a Christmas gift for your fucking son because Christmas is coming, but you need to shut the fuck up, Cheryl, because I'm going to tell you about honey. Honey. Free money. You like that rhyme right there? You like that I rhyme two things together? I know how to use the English lexicon to work to my advantage, and you should know how to work online shopping to your advantage. Imagine you're sitting in your gamer chair, sipping your gamer juice, wearing your gamer glasses, and playing on your gamer keyboard and mouse on your gaming game website, and you're buying a new game. And all of a sudden, Honey just walks right up in the corner of the screen and goes, Hey man, you just saved some money on that game. And you go, How? And Honey says, Does it matter? You just saved for some free money on that game. I wouldn't ask questions either. Honey will find working coupons on over 30,000 stores online. And you don't even have to do anything. You can just save money. I can't tell you how many times I need extra cables for what I do, whether I replace bad ones or I buy more peripherals for my big recording studio video content creation warehouse setup. They rack up. They get expensive. But with Honey, they've got savings on them. That's right. If Honey finds a working coupon all over the internet, you're going to watch your prices drop. Think about clothes. Think about tech stuff. Think about pizza. Think about headphones. Think about God knows what else. Works for anything. If you don't have Honey installed already, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It is literally free and installs in a few seconds. By getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash official. That's joinhoney.com slash official. Thank you to our sponsors for making us do this show full time. But more importantly, thank you out there for listening to me rant about sponsors for six straight minutes. I love you. All right, that's good. <laughs> I'm done. That's yeah, pretty back. good. That Thanks good. to the sponsors for sponsoring this episode of the official podcast. Yeah. You guys know we appreciate you. Thank you. I the audience love every just, single one of those products and use them all. The audience was on the edge of their seats. They couldn't wait for which one was coming next. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought that was like you were transitioning the combo, and then I remembered I needed to shut up. So good job on that. <laughs> <laughs> you never need to shut up. No, no, please keep oh, talking. We're so down sweet. a member. We gotta make up. We gotta make up for lost quality here. We're down a member. We're, we're fucking desperate. I don't know if you can hear it in our voices, but we are struggling. We're sweating. We are panicking. Recording Wendy this episode more than making up for it. When to go? Oh yeah, do you have, he's doing a great job. I want to talk about oh, the you. uh, UAPs, please. Like, um, have you guys like looked more into the UAP stuff? Any of us? UAP. UAP, as in UFO. What? What is oh, UAP? Oh, oh. Why did you say UAP well, yeah, why, then, instead of UFO? Then why did you make it so confusing? Well, it's just a new what the, what yeah. they call it. These Don't come days. up with your own it's, acronyms. Uh, Use the UFO. I didn't come up with it. <clears throat> so what does it stand for? Um, what was it? Unidentified aerial phenomena. I think oh that, that's what they're called now. Anyway, I mean it's the same shit as UFOs, except they change the name for it now. But what I've noticed, I've not looked into it, but I wanna. What I've noticed is that we now have a new crop of ufologists. Like, you guys remember the old crop, which would just be some white trash dude on TLC or something claiming like, yeah, they kidnapped me and they put probes up my butthole. And that has <laughs> yeah, changed, I've days. noticed. Because yeah, that was when the good. 
That's why he's hey, on the show. Hey, watch your mouth. That's my people you're talking about. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, nowadays, I, I see these people on, like, social media, and I figure, you know, that's a wild claim. The U.S. government found extraterrestrial materials, and they're patenting the technology and this and that. And, like, but then I look at their profile expecting to see a complete nut job, and then I see it's, oh, this is actually, like, a scientist at fucking CERN. This guy works at NASA. This guy works at, uh, you know, I don't know, just some egghead job. I've noticed that shift. Does anyone else? Isn't the isn't the distinction that like UFOs are kind of specifically trying to be alien, whereas UAPs is more? Oh, look at this weird thing we caught on film. We don't know what that is. Yeah, but they do uh, lean into the hinting that it is alien technology, and that the U.S. government is basically just basically fishing these things out of the sky and making them crash so they can harvest the technology on it. Wait, so aliens are coming <laughs> well, yeah, here and the you? government is just shooting them down to collect their resources? That is, yes, I, I is. saw one of them literally float this idea <laughs> that the government has anti-UAP technology. I, I forget what they call it. They have like a specific name for it. It's basically the idea it's like a tractor beam where they disable the onboard navigation of the fucking UFO and make it crash land someplace. And then the harvesters come in to take it apart <laughs> and basically research it for their own purposes. These fucking idiots. What if that was? Keep what that if that was here. the truth? What if every week the U.S. I, was visited by aliens and they had sophisticated autopilot and warp speed and jump drives and all this shit? But we just never see them because the U.S. immediately pulls them down with a tractor beam and blows them up. <laughs> that extreme diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate to talk. There's there's a little like dark room in NASA. It's got a giant steel door with no label on it. And if you enter in the security code, you go in and there's just a bunch of like drone piloting nerds who are just constantly firing at aliens like an arcade game. <laughs> pulling them down to Earth aliens have actually been invading us for decades, like full on invading us. And they're <laughs> they're like, yeah, they never stopped. Down. They're yeah, they found it like we ever came since in Roswell. Keys. <laughs> <laughs> we're committing we're alien give you the genocide cure to right cancer. now. <laughs> Meanwhile, on their home planet of Zizgabar, they have like their peaceful leader, and he's like, Oh, we've lost contact with probes 17, 22, and 84. <laughs> we have to send 30 more. We have to get these aliens the message of world peace. <laughs> they need to know. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking idiots. Galago was a documentary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I that think was their first attempt. Yeah, that film. <laughs> um,. <laughs> A lot of that, see, here's the issue with, like, most stuff that involves the government. Um, no one will ever <laughs> Okay, really... Tennessee boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, took, it only took me half an hour to break into government uh, ranting. Um, <laughs> like, whenever you deal with anything that involves the government, it's always going to be unknown to the degree that even if they say, like, definitively something happened, most people aren't going to believe them. Um, yeah. So I remember, like, I think it was last year, they announced that there was a bunch of UFOs that they have no idea what they were. Um, and, like, most of the UFO, like, the ones you were talking about, the old school, you know, the aliens sucked me up and put a probe in me and all that, those guys were like, nah, I guess aliens aren't real since the government said so. so. <laughs> yeah, right. So then you have that, like, they have to deny whatever the fuck the government says, even when the government is like, yeah, you were right. We lied to you. Yep. That, that we have yep. like little rec <laughs> records of unknown stuff flying in the skies, but. <laughs> Are you guys saying that the government issued like a press statement saying that these guys actually did get probed? I didn't see that. No, they didn't say <laughs> get probed, but we've talked about this before, Jackson. How have you not heard of this? The government did admit that, yes, UAPs are real. There are things in the sky that float around and fly around that are beyond our recognition that's not what and they understanding. Said. Well, but, well, it is what they said, but that's like an artistic interpretation of what they said. Like, it could, it could have just been like military drones that they don't know about or other countries' drones well, or yes. civilian drones. Yeah, but the point is they used to deny that that even happens and now they don't deny it anymore. That's the point. Yeah, the old excuse, like, it's a meme now, like, the whole weather balloon thing, but during the Cold War, whenever there was, like, a plane or weird ship spotted uh, above the U.S., they'd be like, oh, it's a weather balloon, when in most likelihood <laughs> it was some country's, you know, aircraft they were testing out or whatever. Yeah. Um, the government would always just brush it off as being a weather balloon. Um, so a lot of people, like, 
it, it's more so than just the alien stuff. Like with a lot of the UAPs, it's like they said, you know, it's another government or it's some weapons testing or what have you. Uh, but just because the government said the UAPs do exist, that has made conspiracy theorists think that it's absolutely anything other than that. <laughs> that <it's laughs> like, I've seen I've seen people theorize about times the government has said, oh, this is like a new kind of plane we were testing out, and people are like, nah. That was an angel. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> I've seen those wasn't ones. A plane. Yeah. I really want it to be aliens, man. I hate the the plausible explanations like, oh, it's just whatever, fucking China or Russia testing a new hypersonic missile or whatever the hell. Like, no, please let it be aliens. I want aliens. <laughs> let damn it be it. aliens this time. <laughs> I want I want us to discover alien life before I die. That's my only wish. I'll die happy. But if no, I know it's we it's not alone good. It's not good if it's aliens because that means that the U.S. government has literally been shooting them down, right? It means we've been committing alien genocide. As we I should. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a it's, shit. Uh, <laughs> it, it's uh, but you what are right fuck? that it's kind of, it's kind of like uh, the new thing for like egg, eggheads or brainiac types to support the idea of there being extraterrestrial life, um, whereas like you know. 40 years ago, that was seen as like a crackhead conspiracy theory. But now you've got Elon Musk and all those people like, oh yeah, aliens are out there, definitely. Um, so there has well, to I thought that was a, always a popular belief that aliens are out there. It's just the debated oh, uh, yeah, topic yeah, is if they visited us. Yeah, yeah. what it we mean is... It was, that but it used to be mostly put away by like the academia crowd. Like, the, like seeing yeah. aliens as being out there was put down on in official settings. Uh, but whereas now, like... Like I said, it's kind of cool to believe in it. Like, I think it was Elon Musk who was talking about the great filter theory um, and like all the conspiracies around that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's become much more mainstream as of late. Well, you'd think you'd think statistically it would have to to some degree be that aliens are out there. I mean, think of it. If the universe is as big as it is and infinitely expanding, you have infinite tries at life. You know, you got one here. Who's to say we didn't get another one? 68 trillion miles away or whatever the fuck. Well, that doesn't mean is. that they exist now, though. Yeah. It just means that they eventually will exist. Or have right. existed. Mm. Right. Hmm. Well, I hope it's real. Hmm. I hope they're visiting us. I hope they'll forgive us for the U.S. government shooting them down and then subjecting them to <laughs> MK Ultra LSD drugs or whatever the fuck they're doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> now you're thinking. That, that's the truth. What if what, what, what technology? Uh, look, what I if a visit to Earth is just like a bender? They just come here for like the drugs and stuff. <laughs> they get shot down a pump planet. full of like LSD and shit by the government. And leave. <laughs> Dude, you should drop by like Earth. They fucking. They put probes in your asshole. It's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> realistically, realistically, what do you think would happen? So we're in the middle of the desert, and it's like there's like a military base nearby or whatever. And realistically, like a literal flying saucer straight out of the '60s crashes onto the Earth, and an alien comes out, and he's like, <laughs> like we we have no idea what the fuck it's doing or saying. Do you, in a realistic scenario, no government conspiracies or any of that? Do you think they just shoot it on sight or they? <laughs> actually try to like contain the fucking thing well if it's not a threat like in that moment then i think communication should be a priority well mm -hmm. are you talking about finds it right yeah are you talking about normal citizenry or are you talking about the government fighting them oh first? the government let's let's say that the alien like locks onto area 51 and it's like ah oh, my research shows this is where i should land it's area 51 and he just he just lands in there, and the government knows it's an alien. Do you think that they're gonna actually try to pull him in or just fucking take they him out? They just pull out a revolver, oh. shoot him in the head immediately. It's fucked yeah, up. I really like, don't know. He could be a threat. You never know. Well, it, it's like I said. It depends. If like you know, an Air Force lieutenant or whatever sees it, they'll probably take it in. But if you've got like a couple Marines on patrol, and like they that happens in front of them, they are destroying that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it just depends on who comes you have to remember, about the chain like, of command you have yeah, to remember yeah, the government the, the, the government is equal parts evil and incompetent so it's really a crapshoot of what the fuck's <laughs> gonna happen but that alien is not gonna be greeted with peace Aww, <laughs> that's so parts sad parts evil and incompetent I like that <laughs> Maybe we'll find a diplomatic middle ground where, like, we'll communicate, but we'll tell it to go fuck itself and get off our planet. <laughs> I, like how, I like, like how. Thank you for visiting. I like how our, that's our border your wall ground. is closed to the earth. Get out. <laughs> Leave. Come back with a visa, please. Yeah. Oh, you didn't file the proper paperwork. Is that a jar of peanut butter? That didn't go through security. That Take could be your a shoes off, substance. sir. 
Put your hands above you your it. head and stand still. <laughs> oh my god. The fucking T the fucking TSA. That was the topic I wanted to bring up, but <laughs> god, <laughs> it just TSA. reminded me how fucking mad about it. All right, so I wanted to bring this up. I forgot to bring it up for a while, and then I remembered this story. So I went to Texas about a month ago, as you guys know. For the wedding. And uh, one of my friends got stopped in security. And we had to wait an extra, like, 15, almost 20 minutes because he had a jar of, like, peanut butter in his backpack. He bought some, like, homemade peanut butter at a store. And he wanted to bring it to eat on the plane. And they were like, oh, you can't take this on the plane. And it, it's like... Where's the fucking line with this shit? Oh, I can tell you. <laughs> there could I be a the line uh. was 200 milliliters because I also got pulled aside when I was traveling in America and the TSA agents fished something out of my fucking bag. I think it was like facial cream or something. It was like, you can't bring this on board. They are annoying <sighs> like that. When I was going through the TSA in America, when I came over to America, I literally saw like an old guy in a wheelchair get pulled aside and strip searched. Well, not strip searched, but, the, you know, like searched. And I was like, I I don't think that's that's a terrorist, guys. But <laughs> that is dead. this guy that's like unable to move unless assisted is uh, probably not pulling any shit on this well, plane. How do you know he's not faking it? <laughs> I, he's I, faking okay. being old. Yeah, this ninety-year-old dude. He looked like a ghost. Well, that's so. the one that. That's exactly who I would recruit into my terror organization. The one you least expect. I don't know. I'm always, whenever I'm not flying and I don't have to fly anytime soon, I'm like, ah, oh, this is safety theater. This is just to make us feel safe. This is a stupid waste of money. But then when I have to fly because I'm so terrified of flying, I'm like, yeah, strip search everyone. Put your fingers in that guy's asshole. I think <laughs> that breastfeeding mother over there, I think her baby is a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fucking problem, man, because, like, there's still a ton of people who think the TSA do anything. They miss... What was the statistic? It was, like, ABC News. They tried to sneak shit in and, like, measured how well they could do it. They snuck, like, 90% of their contraband through, and the TSA didn't even notice it. Yeah. Isn't that insane? Yeah. Well, what, no, the TSA has proven to be they ineffective. It? They have proven yeah. to be ineffective and a waste of money. It's just all... Don't tell me show. that. I don't want to know this. <laughs> well, that, that's the part you were talking about, like equal parts evil and incompetence. Because what happen, what always happens with this stuff is they are incredibly dumb about one thing, so they overcompensate mm -hmm. everywhere it doesn't matter. So like, yeah, yeah. So like nine eleven was what did it for them, uh, and there were mm -hmm. like a, a group of four guys who went to a flight school in Florida, who learned how to fly a plane, and then told the instructor, no, it's okay, we don't need to learn how to land. And they were given a pass. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no joke, that's the hijackers. That's what the hijackers did. They, got, they learned to fly shit. in Florida, yeah. Another, another fucking great example is, how long ago was the shoe bomber? You guys yeah, remember the yeah. shoe bomber who tried to bring a shoe, shoe bomb bomber? into a plane? How long ago was that? And it, like, it wasn't even successful. And now we still have to take our fucking yep. shoes off for no reason. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's insane. Like, what did he put a, a a bomb in his shoes that he was wearing? I don't remember the exact details, but I, I know that so. that case is the specific reason we have to take our shoes off. And it, it was so long ago, and nothing like that has remotely even happened since. So where, where is the line, a, though? Uh, if that's the case, like, are we just eventually going to be, like, all sitting naked on a plane because we're not allowed to wear any clothes because we could conceal items? <laughs> that, this this well, is you, the future they want for us. Just yeah. naked flights. <laughs> just naked but, like, Ep Epstein's flights. plane was, like, the <laughs> introduction for that. <laughs> Ew. This is what the that's aliens want. Goal. <laughs> that's the one. That, yeah, that's the plane it the was, aliens want to be on. Yeah, it was. It was fucking 2001. I just found info on it. This happened back in 2001, and it was it was a guy wearing shoes that had explosives in there. I thought you meant 9/11. I was like, no shit, it happened in 2001. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it actually happened after 9/11. That's another thing too. That's another fucking thing. So this happened in December of 2001. So like three months after 9/11, and with all the incredible paranoia and increased security and TSA measures, he still got on the plane with his shoe bomb. Yep. Still did. Yep. Wait, and he now, got on and the... So he didn't blow up the plane, obviously, because we would have been talking about it. 
but he got subdued by other passengers and then they landed and like he was arrested and all this shit. But it's like, even with all the increased TSA security stuff, he still got the fucking bomb on the plane. And now, to this day, 21 years later, we still have to take our fucking shoes off, even though that man specifically proved that the TSA doesn't do anything. So, Andrew, <laughs> what, God damn it. What, was there a guy that like actually did smuggle in a peanut butter bomb? Like, why is peanut butter on the Yeah, the old peanut no butter list. bombing of 2006. <laughs> That's right, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it. It just exploded, it's splattering just, peanut it's butter everywhere. So, it was a mess to clean up. What That's even why is they the excuse? It. It's just so stupid. I, I think I remember they tell us, like, you you can't take liquids and <clears> stuff like peanut butter uh, past the, uh, to the Yeah, that's just a custom thing. Because that's, that's usually a customs thing. Is it? I thought it's, like, so you can't, like, mix chemicals together to make something explosive on board. But I always knew, yeah, this is just, you're making me throw away Bro, my that, water, so I have to buy a $6 bottle of water, don't you? That's your grift. Dude, imagine if, like, you've sat down like, in the plane, and the guy next to you just breaks out, like, a junior chemistry set and starts making a bomb out of peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> of those science goggles. Dude, we, we live twice. in such a goddamn, yeah. such a fucking different time. Like, can you imagine the era back when you could just openly smoke on planes? Yeah. <laughs> and just fill Dude, them with fucking tobacco I, smoke I watched, and not care? I watched Die Hard the other day. And, uh, oh yeah Good yeah movie. in the opening of that movie he's on a plane and he stands yeah. up and he has his gun on and he's like yeah. and the guy looks at him he's like oh i'm a cop and just walks off i'm like he has Man, his you... fucking gun on and yeah, it's okay you, <laughs> you used Dude, to be able to the walk sequel, on the plane that's the other thing well, you don't get, he was a good sequel. guy he was one of the good in guys in die hard 2 in the fucking sequel his wife is trapped on an airplane and you want to know how she communicates with them down on the ground she uses the fucking plane phone and just calls <laughs> down there they just call things you can use a cell phone and a fucking phone on a plane isn't that insane even though it's been proven in nearly every test that the radio frequencies that phones and laptops makes do not interfere with plane equipment in any way that still baffles me to this day like put your put all your devices in flight mode except you can still use your tablet it's like wait why like what difference does it make Why, why do i have to put my fucking watch in flight mode this I know it doesn't make sense, it but makes I no fucking my sense. fear of like planes crashing and shit. I I still get annoyed I when I see people on their phones doing that aspect. I am me too. I know. So you're not it's, a team it's player. It's just so weird, though. It's like <laughs> I, I get I get being abundantly cautious, and they want you to turn like your cell phone signal off. Like, okay, I guess you're communicating with the tower, whatever. But how the fuck are my wireless Bluetooth headphones that are only connecting to my switch or my phone gonna? crash the plane how am i wireless I headphones which sometimes even randomly disconnect from my fucking phone which is right next to them <laughs> gonna interfere with like a million dollar flight equipment it's stupid but also oh. so when you go you reminded me with the gun thing um so you guys know what an air marshal is right the guys who basically yes. Yes, like a sheriff they, mm-hmm. right he's basically the police like of the skies yeah yeah, he's a sheriff that can fly. Yeah, yeah. There's security, <laughs> and they dress in civilian clothing. And on every flight, I think that you're supposed to have at least one or two. I think, depending, I guess, on the size of the plane. And they just blend into <laughs> the, the entire the plane. Is just air sheriffs. <laughs> it's just always <laughs> every city is occupied. Anyway, so Quite after I came back from my trip, I did a lot of research on flying and shit because I was like relaxed. So I just looked up a bunch of crashes and documentaries and shit. Did you guys I know that air marshals too. apparently have a ton of controversy and are extremely incompetent to the point that like a lot of them are just straight up alcoholics? Because well, all they're they just police. Uh, right? They're just Absolutely. like cops. They're just police. <laughs> just like cops. So, <laughs> yeah. I've Bums. got a buddy who is a pilot uh, for JetBlue, and there's a certification course that pilots can go through so that they can carry their gun on a plane. Um, because they view it as, well, if the pilot's armed, you know, that's probably not a bad idea. So, he went through the course where, like, the training's like they teach you to sit down in a chair and point the gun behind you like down the aisle and stuff like that (laughs) just fire Uh, randomly into the aisles (laughs) I don't think it's random (laughs) Um, just take a a shot just make sure Yeah, Yeah, that guy going to the bathroom you never know (laughs) the protocol is if there's any problem execute everyone on the plane no survivors no witnesses (laughs) if you don't know who the terrorist is 
<laughs> if you don't know who the terrorist is, just start in order. You'll hit him eventually. <laughs> that's it's that's fine. the real reason that the uh, door seals to the cockpit, so they can just gas the entire rest of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they got a they got a particularly rowdy flight. Uh, this this cabin's lost. <laughs> Push the button. <laughs> we'll get a new one when we land. Hey, <laughs> just, uh, just, just, the just so you guys at the tower know, uh, the whole crew's like terrorist or something. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, anyway, the, but, apparently the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And I was just gonna say, while he was taking that training course, uh, air marshals were teaching it, and listening to the doctrine they teach is the most laughably wrong stuff I've ever heard. Um, one of the air marshals suggested that it's a like if they the pilots want to, they should carry their gun with the slide lock back. So, like, the slide always sticking backwards, and then if they need it, to pull it out and then snap the slide forward and shoot, which is one of the dumbest boomer ideas I've ever heard. Why? That just Why? sounds like a stupid safety. But it, it, that's yeah. the idea. Can you that they're like, this keeps yeah. the gun, they say it keeps the gun safe, uh, which, just use for the one, no, it doesn't. Yeah, just oh, use yeah, it's for. called the safety. <laughs> Either use the safety, don't rack it. The worst thing you want is the firing pin and slide locked back, ready to go at a moment's notice. Right. <laughs> Making the gun <laughs> way longer than it has to be. Uh, but to make yeah, it as safe as possible, like they that. should hide each bullet around the cabin and then they have to go on like an Easter egg hunt for <laughs> like <a> <laughs> <to use> it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You have to find the bullet before I, you're able to use it. I did not know <clears throat> that pilots are allowed to carry guns, but I guess that makes sense. Yeah, they have to go through a course. Uh, I think my buddy said it was like five classes or something. Is there a limit on what they're able to carry? Or they, uh, can they like dual wield and shit? Can they like... <laughs> like a Uzi? Like <laughs> yeah, a full-on like AK-47? Yeah. <laughs> and I know guys who like as, like as a half joke carry like AR pistols and stuff as their concealed carry. Um, so I, wa I wonder if they would say anything like, you know, cause you're a pilot, you're allowed to carry your handgun and then you just pull out a Draco from your pants <laughs> and like set that down on the check-in. Like, yeah, this is coming with me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what, like, would it maybe help if we like just deputized the, all the flight crew in the same way, all the hostesses and shits are strapped. Imagine like that little like um, flight attendant while she's giving the introduction has like an AR across her back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you there'd be way fewer like drunken passengers just yelling at the flight crew if they just pulled yeah. out their guns every time and just pointed at, at well, the they, fucking they, it the be, fuck. It should be like Oprah. Like there's a gun under everyone's seat. <laughs> like, like fucking battle royale they yeah. just get random weapons, <laughs> random like, weapons. While, while, while she's doing the whole talk it's like in the event of a terrorist attack yeah. along with the uh, uh, oxygen masks a gun will drop into your lap uh, accuracy is advised uh, <laughs> we, we need to institute Operation Eagle Free into more institutes of America we just need them to add guns to everything we do everyone would be safe Safe. There are now idea. there are now more guns in the U.S. than there are people. So I feel fuck like yes, yeah. that's been true for a while. You need I at least two. You need a gun and a backup gun, you know, you, just you, in case. And then you need a backup gun for that backup gun because you know you right. never know when you'll have a problem. Yeah, and then might as well carry four <laughs> while you're at it. <laughs> and then you need a gun for when you're transferring between guns because right. you don't ever want to not have a gun. Like like you got your living room gun, you got your bedroom gun, but what about when you're moving from the living room to the bedroom? You're going to mm. need a gun to escort you. You, you, know? you need true, a gun yeah. to shoot open the the gun safe to then pick up the gun. <laughs> <to> <laughs> the you use a gun to shoot the lock off another yeah. gun. <laughs> then you're good to go. That's pretty good. <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard, uh, like, most people in America, even if they're not, like, even if they don't like guns, they still own a gun for protection because they, they yep. need to in in a world where yeah. everyone has a gun. God bless America. Yeah, that is the one thing I like thing. about Australia is that we had one mass shooting uh, in the late 90s and then the government just bought every single gun and said no more. <laughs> and now we don't yes, have guns. Wonderful from the Australian. Our government disarmed us. <laughs> well, it's been fine so far. That's historically we, we have to, a great idea. All we have to worry about is the koalas and spiders, apparently. So we're doing pretty but good. Jackson, but Jackson, we in the Constitution have protection from the idea of the government kicking down our homes 
and taking everything from us. You voted which for they're them. they're known to do. Idiots. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. they never do that. I'm glad that they definitely don't assume their authority. Or yeah. <laughs> they, they definitely don't take it's stuff Randomly swat you consent. and shoot your dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm Look, glad that's thanks, never happened. <laughs> thanks to the Constitution, as you know, and this, this happens all the time. There's a legal precedent. If a cop enters my house with a warrant or anything, but I, thanks to the Constitution, I can shoot him dead and I'm fine. <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> and legally protected, <laughs> thanks to my right to bear arms. That's what it means. That's how it works. Yeah. Yep, that, that's what it means. Oh, you yeah. can execute with extreme prejudice. <laughs> yeah. no, no complications. You can, as long as you're in your house, you can just shoot anyone ever. from out the window. You just like taking blind shots of people walking by. <laughs> hey, <laughs> castle doctrine, man. He was coming into my home. <laughs> you shoot the paper boy I off his bike. I have the right to kill him and end his fucking life. Yeah, well, officer, he was coming into my house from his porch on the other side of the street. I just you see, yeah, I'm you pretty see that sure guy he was coming his own over business? here. You see the guy across the street in his home watching television? He was thinking about coming into my home. He looked at me. Thank God, I had my sniper <laughs> right. set up. That's your that's your Stand legal defense. He looked state. at me. Mm. Sure, it's happened before. I do find it a good thing, though, because you can't, like, there are cases, I forget, but there was one, a recent one, where the cops basically fucked up the invasion of the house. Essentially, they didn't announce themselves as the police when they were breaking in to arrest someone, and the guy fired back and, like, I think killed one of the cops. So now he's in a court defending himself, because legally he's allowed to do that, because he had no idea well, that was they didn't announce themselves, yeah. That was, yeah. Well, no? that's, mm -hmm. the, that's, like, the new hot issue topic in a lot of states, is the whole... Uh, red flag laws no knock. Uh, oh yeah, yeah the whole no knock raids and all that because like the the whole red flag thing is if someone is viewed as being a dangerous individual in some states the police are allowed to then enter the house without quote unquote giving themselves away uh but what that does in practice is is people can enter the home and just shoot someone and if the guy tries to defend themselves well they shot a cop and it uh yeah, that's pretty so it has fucked. become a big issue. That's, yeah. that's pretty not retarded. good. So they're just like execution yeah. squads then. That's obviously not going to go well if you storm into someone's house randomly. Well, from the people that live in the house uh, perspective, it's random. Uh, and then like, you, you're not you're not alerting them of anything. They're, they're going to put up a fight. Yeah. That's why whenever I'm home, instead of a door lock, I have a counterweight mounted to a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dumbest thing. You can never I be too careful. In most jurisdictions, <laughs> not just America, like around the world, you're not allowed to booby trap your own house, and I hate it. It's like such a dumb <laughs> thing. Wait, why, why are you allowed to? Surely you are. So no, you're not. I think the rule is at least. No, you're not. And the excuse is like, well, you know, what if you have like a heart attack and EMTs have to break the door in and to get to oh, you? Yeah, and then, sure. you know, they're not true. supposed to get shot in the <laughs> face with shot. like a <laughs> wily coyote contraption of an axe just coming at Yeah, they, they yeah. slip over on grease on the floor and shit. They did the little cartoon I think, running I think one of the I think one of the precedents that set for that was there was a hoarder who like died. And their house was just covered in shit, like newspapers and books and all sorts of garbage. And their their sibling or relative or whatever tried to go help them while they were dying and sick or injured or whatever. And just they just got crushed by a stack of debris and died uh, too. Uh, <laughs> well, that's not really intentional. My but, word. Oh. <laughs> Technically, the entire house was a booby trap at that point. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, what is it the worst? I, I think Dude, I think about that so often, man. I've been living lately trying to be more minimalistic. Like I clean yeah. out my fucking closet and spare stuff like once I a month hoarders. just to get rid of shit. I hate it. I, I can't imagine just living with junk. Just shit you don't even remember you have that takes up your entire living space. A literal Fucked junk up. too. Just like every single time got hoarders in principle sounds like a funny show to watch, right? But whenever I try, I just get sad because every single fucking episode, I swear to God, they, they just they lift the box up and underneath is just a petrified kitten. Every time. Yep. I just I can't watch mm -hmm. this. And the like the hoarder lady will every single time be like, Oh mittens, I thought, yeah, we lost her like two years ago and never <laughs> saw her again. <laughs> <laughs> what a special day. <laughs> she finally Hooray! found her. <laughs> we found her. Um, I think the rule, if I recall correctly, about booby traps is that you have to, it, you can booby trap your house as long as it is reasonably not with lethal intent. So oh, so like, you can do the Home Alone shit? 
You can to a degree. <laughs> uh, so, like for example, you can put up electric fences around your house, right? That's and like that's track. legal because that's reasonably not lethal. You cannot uh, put up landmines around your house. <laughs> oh, fucking government! Damn it. Yeah. I know, right? Infringing once again. Um, but I, I think I, like because technically, if you go along the whole booby trap thing, then like well, legally home security systems could be seen as within that so i think as long as it's like non-lethal you're good to go so you can set up like a pepper spray gun or something Ooh, like yeah yeah like non-lethals yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. what about a taser just a then? bunch mm. of yeah you could do a taser you could do a bunch of flashbangs now uh, how do we <laughs> legally set the distinction for lethal and non-lethal for example if i had a st- like i have a staircase let's say uh-huh. and i put a bunch of marbles in front of it yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> would that be lethal because a bad fall down Ooh. the stairs can fucking kill you i think honestly i think that would depend on the jury <laughs> If you, mm. if you can convince the jury <laughs> that the marbles were there for purely altruistic purposes. <laughs> yeah, see, because I could argue the marbles aren't lethal yeah. and, like, the stairs aren't the lethal. The stairs part of the house. I, I bet you could yeah, win that. Yeah, it's part of the house. Yeah. I bet you could win that case, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like, well, okay, so if it's part of the house, then how far does that go? It's like, officer, that's just where I mount my shotgun, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> and the stri- Is the string lethal? That's what I thought. <laughs> I like God, to keep that's the a string point. attached to the trigger, your honor. <laughs> Yeah, it keeps me on my toes. I, I enjoy mounting my gun, facing my door at a three o'clock angle, locked and loaded, as any grown American would. Look, officer, I'm a French historian, and that's just where I put my replica guillotine. Okay. <laughs> it's just, it looks best there. It frames the door really well. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> officer you don't understand i'm a i'm a revolutionary war historian i just like putting my cannon in the kitchen facing the back door that's just where it goes of course i need it loaded officer where else am i gonna store the cannonball god and my gunpowder <laughs> my gunpowder yeah <laughs> <laughs> now, I understand that him opening the door set off a striker match, but is a match <laughs> lethal? That's what I thought. <laughs> I, I would love to see the news article one day where someone takes this too far and you just see the yeah, entire that's front half of their house blown out. <laughs> Nothing we've said Absolutely is too far gone. Someone's still going to have to come up with the too it, far it is a, like It's not super common, but you do hear about meth houses blowing up a lot around here. Oh, well, yeah. Because mm-hmm. of the chemical mm-hmm. work, right? Right, yeah. So, like, if you combine it wrong, it just explodes. So, like, there will be a... Tra- Imagine just a trailer park, and all of a sudden, one of the houses explode. Yeah, we've got to stop giving uh, those responsibilities to crackheads. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Re- responsibilities, like it's a humanitarian issue. Yeah, we should give them should- a, some... We should leave that kind Go of work ahead, to, like, Gus Fring and the likes of him. Neat and clean in a super lab. Yeah. We should give those responsibilities to a more regulated party. I think the police should handle yeah, cooking just, and distributing <laughs> meth. Right. They do a better job. I think police should start a meth lab. Why not, man? They're underfunded, aren't they? Hell well, are they? Yeah. Their money. Let them earn their money there with a good, honest day's work. That's they sell their crack their and then money. they arrest the people that buy it immediately. <laughs> wait, that's entrapment. <laughs> <laughs> like, they oh wait, that. That, that already happens. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we invented police again. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's I just mean, normal police with extra steps. If... If the entire police force unanimously all across America just decided, all right, we're going to cook and sell meth just out in the open, what are we going to do? Who's going to arrest them? <laughs> Who's going to stop them? They got guns and shit. We need a new police above the police. Why don't we have anything like that? The police, the police, the police. Yeah, I, why don't we have an army? Is that what the <laughs> army? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, wait. I, oh, yes. man, we invented it again. Dang. <laughs> there Damn we go All again. right, so hang on. Let's escalate it. What if the U.S. Army, the entire U.S. military, every branch, the Marines, the Navy, everything, they just collectively said, look, being the world's most superpower military, it's pretty good. It works. But we want, like, some spending cash. We are going to make 
and sell crystal meth <laughs> just out in the open like like no conspiracies no back alley government no like oh maybe they did maybe they didn't they straight up announce on television join the army you'll make crystal meth yeah, men no stop the them. military yeah well minus who's the, gonna stop them minus the meth you kind of just described the federal reserve <laughs> basically yeah and i, I guess yeah. as the same with that no one's gonna stop them they're just gonna do no. it <laughs> you can't fucking government. stop it we're if like, we hey. really if we <laughs> really wanted to fuck over the world we could do it so easily <laughs> no one's oh, gonna very stop us. yes yeah it's like hey guys can you uh can you print can you quit, you know, making meth like at my son's preschool? It's like, go ahead, call us. What are we going to do? <laughs> call your elected officials. See if they'll change yeah. it. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and vote. In about, go, yeah, in about go ahead and vote, months. loser. In about six months, you'll maybe get a bill passed, but by then, I'll have made ten, twelve tons of crystal meth. Go ahead. Maybe a different guy will sell meth to your children. <laughs> See how that goes for you. <laughs> I wonder how oh, many of their hurts. Like, do you guys think there's a bunch of amateur chemists who just make m little amounts of meth just for their personal use? No. no there's no <laughs> such yes. thing as a little amount of meth to a meth addict. Yeah, that's relevant. <laughs> that's pretty relevant. That's true, I guess. I don't know, like, I mean, people do brew their own beer at home sometimes, right? As a hobby. That's completely different. <laughs> yeah, it's so a little completely easier different. to control your alcohol than uh, your meth. That's like a hobby. <laughs> Cooking meth is not a hobby. <laughs> I, I, ju I just, do, well, I just. Hang do. on, Jackson. <laughs> You're really underselling meth addicts. How do you make meth? <laughs> let's let's describe an intricate detail <laughs> yeah. on the podcast. How you make meth? Yeah, this is the new hit hit topic. All right, so First, you need some carboxylic you, acid. Go ahead and get. Yeah, some you need an now. RV. You drive it out into the desert. You need a sidekick <laughs> from high school. Um, yep. Yeah, I've seen yep. Breaking Bad. You need some Sudafed. <laughs> you need some Sudafed. Yeah, you need. Uh, yeah. you need some. Uh, I think they use copper most of the time as a means of like conducting the crystal structure and stuff like that so yeah we wow, can do you know it. a lot we have a smart person uh, on the show as i have a no idea what any Minecraft. of that means <laughs> like whenever uh. i was in um uh, when i took organic chemistry um like my professor would always talk about meth uh and i think what it is <laughs> is because like he knows He's how much head. money <laughs> no, no no it's like it's this, it's the same Walter White thing. Like he knows how much money he could make selling it. So every lab, he'd be like, "Yeah, if you just like took that bottle there and put it in there, you'd have meth." Anyway, back to the you could live life. my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Do you think he's just like sullenly daydreaming, like you yeah. guys are doing a little worksheet, and he's looking out the window and he's like, uh, "I could be selling meth." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I remember I remember one time he got mad at us in class because like everyone did bad on the test. And I remember he went, I could be selling meth right now, but no, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that man is that man is one cancer diagnosis away from actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, he he sounds like, like a cool professor. Yeah, he oh, oh, oh he he was fantastic. I loved him. Uh he talked about like that kind of stuff all the time. He showed us how to make meth in lab one time. <laughs> And he was like, now if I mix these two together, that would do it. I'm not going to do it, but if I wanted to, I will. Like, <laughs> Did you go to school in a back alley? <laughs> That's just a crack, man. It's like he's, no. he's testing his own limits, though. He's like progressing each each day to a new new high. Like he's eventually going to do it. He's eventually going to do it. He, it like, the next week, he brings in slideshows of 9-11, and he's like, today, this is what we're learning, class. <laughs> His addiction was almost making meth. Like, that was his high. Like, looking at the two beakers next to each oh. other and sweating. Like, that's what he was into. See, don't you think that guy, at least one time, just for shits and giggles, did it? And then just tried it out? Maybe just yeah, once actually, in yeah, private? I think so. Every, mm -hmm. Everyone makes a little meth. Every and at that point, you, you gotta do it, right? You gotta, you gotta get rid of the evidence. So you gotta smoke it, or whatever the fuck you do with meth. And I mean, you have to test it to make sure you once. did it right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, then, like you can't, you don't know. And how then you well need you to prove that you high. can, uh, you can do it again. So then you do it again, yeah. and you make more math. <laughs> and, and then, then you can prove the point, formula. Yeah. Right, and at that point, you've already committed two felonies, and like you have zero money to show for. So now you have to profit off of it. So you make a third yeah. batch. Well, of it's math. not cheap to make math, right. of course. So exactly. you're, you're yeah, in you the gotta, hole like, at the moment. So investment. Maybe you go out outside and now you've got your investment. 
Yeah. And now you've got clientele, you know, that's they, yeah. more, and you can't let them down, so... They know where you live as well, so there's a bit of danger there, because you've made a clientele out of crackheads with knives and shit, and I assume. And now, you're, now your family's been kidnapped by the cartel, so you have to make more delays <laughs> by those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Meth is a business same as any other. <laughs> this is just... <laughs> Like, hey, what's As the stock you're price on the meth? fifth batch to save your family from the cartel, you're like, and I tell you what, the, uh, the uh, capital isn't just what it used to be in this country. <laughs> this business has a lot of overhead. God, like, oh, I would He's have talking to his if wife in bed, like, oh, honey, all this red tape from the government is really killing my business. It's so stupid. We need to deregulate everything. <laughs> At least his 401k is pretty good, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys think meth I miss or meth. drugs like that will ever be legal? No. <laughs> Not well, unless the actual meth used head to gets say the same thing about weed. I, right? I imagine an idealistic future where we can take, say, cocaine and synthesize like the addictive properties out of it, so cocaine just becomes something fun to do. Oh, oh that, that would actually that would be, be so, cool. so nice. That would be amazing. Yeah. Why is no one working on that? I'd Fucking love that. Marlboro and all the companies, they need to get on like... Well, they wanted, they wanted to be addictive. Addictifying drugs. No, that's true. Those that's companies wanted to be addictive. Yeah. That's, that's now, actually I really good go, point. I, I want to go, I want to go to the family fun center and it's like, all right, Jimmy, you go on the go-karts and Susan, you and your mom, you can go play the basketball game and I'm going to go to the concession stand and buy some cocaine. Like I, <laughs> I imagine a world where recreational drugs are just, we figured it out. We've gotten rid of the health effects and the addiction and all the problems with it. And they're just, they're just something you do. You just uh, yeah, I think I'll do some cocaine today. That sounds fun. Well, you just would a be fun amazing. thing to do. You can work towards this future, Andrew. All you need to do is find <laughs> find the most I don't know like presentable crackhead in your nearest vicinity <laughs> and convince him to run for office. I guess I'll be looking for a while. I live in Florida. You're, you're just talking about now libertarians now. Like you know how they yeah, have their true. conferences every once in a while, yeah. and it's like somebody will ask one of the candidates, "So should it be legal to sell four year old heroin?" And he'll say no, and then the audience <laughs> boos him. <laughs> what a true libertarian! What a monster! Um, yeah, I, I tell you what, like cocaine at your, you know, school concession stand would make your daughter's kindergarten graduation way more enjoyable. Oh right? yeah. Yes. <laughs> All yeah. the dads would just I, I wish, mind. I wish drugs were a switch, man. Like if I could turn drugs off and on, I would do them way more often. I hate the fact I, I used to smoke weed all the time. I, I loved it. Like I do it every day, not every day, but most days after I got home You're from work and, you know, just hang out, relax. No, yeah, I, I think I straddled the line of being a stunner. I don't think it was that bad, but probably three, four times a week I'd smoke some weed. And uh, so I, the biggest problem that I had with it overall was you just couldn't turn it off. If you got high, you were high for the next God knows how many hours. So after the oh, hour yeah. or two where I got like, so I got my fun, I'd get high, I'd watch a movie and I'd be like, okay, I'm, that was fun. I was high. I watched that movie. That was great. I don't want to be high anymore, mm -hmm. but <laughs> too bad. You, you got to just ride it out. <laughs> if they invented a switch, a kill switch where it's like, you'll be high for an hour and then you can turn it off. I do that shit every day. Well, every single day. Well, there you go. Awesome. Your kill switch is just other drugs. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's what meth is for. There you go. That's it. Meth, meth is the uh, <laughs> right. clear all. It's like hitting alt, right. control alt Z on whatever you just took. So yeah. <laughs> hey, Duck told us about that. Remember where he would just get drunk, but he didn't want to fall asleep, so he'd do meth. <laughs> 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 what, what kind of what no that's <laughs> some guy he's like ah man i'm getting kind of tired better take some crystal what the heck apparently it was cocaine people oh, say it was, was cocaine, it cocaine? Oh. I, don't, I don't remember what, anymore. was it well, what's would... the is it meth cocaine is more use? wait cocaine what's is the... more like uh i don't know it's nicer than meth meth is like a scary drug in my mind isn't meth, meth is just dangerous. like yeah. white trash heroin? I don't know my drugs. Is I'm it? not a, like a drug. Yeah, no, I don't know. So I'm well, straight edge. Well, yeah, White Wendigoon, you have experience. Yeah, Tell you're, us. You're a drug dealer or something, right? <laughs> so the like if I had to tier them from worst to like 
least effective. Heroin's Do the it. worst by far. Meth is like middle, and then cocaine's the least out of those three. Uh, um, what, what, mm-hmm. what are you judging that of, sir? On, on like how bad the effects are on your oh, body, right. or like how right. addictive long term. So like cocaine uh, is derived from like uh, plants, and like pure cocaine will like get you high and it's kind of just like a really strong Adderall. It's like a stimulant that keeps your mind going. Um, and, but you come down off of it decently hard, not as hard as some other drugs, like the poor version that they make to try to s- get the effects of cocaine is crack. Uh, so crack or crack cocaine crack is cocaine. like mm. a chemically synthetic version that causes way worse effects on your body uh, meth is like, well, meth used to be over the counter in small doses. Like, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's again, a stimulant. Uh, however, meth is like so strong whenever people take it that, uh, it like sends them to the clouds and then they come down really hard. Um, and normally the reason meth is really bad for you is because like the way it's made in trailers, it has so many other weird chemicals and oh, properties yeah, in it. True. That's where people get like scabs on their arms and their eyes sink in and stuff like that. Because um, yeah. it's not pure at all. It's how it's, the form- um, it's how it's formulated. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, but the thing is with like cocaine and meth, you can snort cocaine and meth because they are like getting that direct line. You get a like strong hit of it, but it won't kill you. Heroin is so strong that if I recall correctly, Like, something like 95% of people who try to snort heroin immediately have an aneurysm. Oh, Uh, oh God. Yeah, heroin is the worst. Like, you hear black tar heroin as being, like, the worst drug ever. That's because, like, if heroin is produced wrong, it is like a tarry substance you're shooting into your body. Um, And the only way you can really take it is through injection. And that just, like it erases your brain <laughs> for a small <laughs> amount of time and then you're immediately hooked and like stuck on it. Uh, That's so what it does. Like so, so wait, well, yeah. can you explain what the effects of heroin is and where to get it? Yeah. <laughs> how, much, how much are you offering? So like for, again, this is all from like testimony of people and, you know, different people have different accounts. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> did definitely not. Yeah. Um, heroin to my understanding is like it's not like a hallucinogenic where it sends you to like a different place where you start hallucinating it just like completely removes sensory effects from your body and makes you experience all these weird feelings and sensations for hours and then whenever you come out of that high it feels like you're dying like you're just sick and weak all over Mm -hmm. which is like normally whenever you hear someone's hooked on a drug like that it's not like oh i can't wait to get high again it's oh I want to stop feeling like death. Yeah, I need it. Uh, And heroin can do that to you after one time. Just make you absolutely Mm -hmm. on it. How long does that feeling uh, last for? uh, Usually like anywhere from probably like 12 hours an entire day about. uh, And then when you come out of it, you're miserable. Because I know most people who do it, like they'll do the heroin and then they'll, they'll do it late at night and then wake up the next day feeling awful. So... It's like a very is that why effect. people who do it often slip into like heroin comas where it looks like they're just dead or completely unresponsive and then yes. they just snap out of it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Like you can you be are, in there for a long amount of time. You are an incredibly uh, like knowledgeable man. I think you've had something intelligent to say about every single thing we've thrown <laughs> about you this episode. Yeah, I like it. I'm just a weird person. I'm just a weird person. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't mean to. I don't mean to know stuff about heroin. Well, yeah, but, it just but, intrigues but strangely, me. <laughs> strangely, look at the pattern of topics he's been really knowledgeable on: hardcore drugs, <laughs> booby trapping your home, <laughs> terrorism on airplanes. <laughs> know, this, is, this is worrying. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got to go. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a flight to catch. <laughs> okay, I got a flight to catch for my uh, heroin. Uh, actually, y- you've seen Pulp Fiction, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the movie, the reason Uma Thurber's character almost dies is because she pulls heroin out of uh, Vince Vega's coat and she thinks it's cocaine, so she snorts it, and that's why she almost dies. Oh. Because, yeah, because you can't snort heroin or else that happens. Um uh, but yeah, her- heroin's the big bad. No, but aren't they? Aren't they really different substances? Like physic physically? Like isn't is so? Is heroin a powder like that? Uh, I think you can get it different ways. I'm pretty sure 
again, I'm like not super knowledgeable on this. I think heroin comes in like small crystals, kind of like meth, and you're supposed to melt it down. That's where you see people like lighting mm. a spoon. Um, oh. Yeah. So you, you take it from its crystal form, you melt it, then you suck it up in a needle and shoot it. Um, okay. So that's, I'm taking notes. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah. yeah to, in, anytime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, like meth, you can smoke uh, or you can snort it, but heroin, you pretty much have to shoot. I don't think you can smoke heroin. <laughs> you would be that's the right. absolute worst dare officer I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is exactly how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, don't do anything I just said, kids. But yeah, <laughs> don't do Heroin's any drugs in cool. cool. <laughs> but it gets you super high. <laughs> <laughs> don't do any drugs, but you will be a different person for twelve hours. It's insane. You'll be so cool. <laughs> You'll be the coolest. Man, I on miss the, block. the simpler days of like the eighteen hundred when it was like, ah, you got a headache? How about some cocaine? <laughs> yeah, Unar I unironically. Like, I saw yeah. uh, old cough syrup from the 20s, and the ingredients on the side were cocaine, uh, like, <laughs> methadone, morphine, uh, right? and yeah. alcohol. <laughs> like, yeah. Nice. Just take coke and meth and you'll be fine. <laughs> uh-huh. I, mean, I, I, I wish, wish, I wish we still had that. Cola, just straight up. Yeah. Yeah, they did, didn't it they? It sucks that we were born like, well, after yeah. those times. That's, where, that's, that's why it's called Coke. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. Coca-Cola, and Coca, the derivative is it comes from the plant that makes cocaine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like an opium yeah. plant. Fucking, uh, fucking German soldiers in World War II were given methamphetamine as yep. part of their like Rewards. little kit for fighting so war to keep actually, them awake and alert. So that's actually where like the whole Blitzkrieg formula of war comes in for the Germans. Because <laughs> they would so, just buy. Yeah, so Blitzkrieg means lightning warfare, and the reason they were able to push into Russia so fast, like, they moved from the coast all the way to Stalin, mm. or the border of Russia all the way to Stalingrad in, like, under a year, was because they would fight in 48-hour cycles. So you would yep. have one division that would, like, fight for a day, and then when they were tired, they would straight up do meth. They would have little <laughs> methamphetamine <laughs> capsules. They would fight another 24 hours, and then the group that was behind them would leapfrog, and they would keep doing that cycle over and over, and that's how they pushed halfway through Russia in under a year. Because they just never quit moving, never stopped. Your troops don't run out of uh, uh, sustainment whenever you're able to cycle through them like that. But yeah, they just did meth. That's how the Blitz Creek <laughs> yeah. worked. They yeah, were I think, nice. Uh, I think they did this something similar with the Japanese pilots. Just they would shoot them up with fucking drugs and tell them to just kamikaze boats. Because when you're that high, you yeah. just don't it give a fuck anymore. It seems to me, it seems to me with all its practical uses, we need to bring back like over the counter meth and cocaine and all that. <laughs> yeah, might be uh, okay. Yeah. There's I think you're right. You can do. <laughs> I, I suppose <laughs> that is the conclusion that well, we're coming well, to. Well, from hang this on, discussion. hang on. Hear me out. Hey, hear me out. Caffeine is a stimulant, right? Right. It is it is no debate a stimulant, a fucking drug that changes your brain chemistry, your body chemistry, amps you up, gives you focus, whatever. So why don't we just go like, hey, here's a more powerful stimulant called cocaine. <laughs> what's, the, what's the problem? Maybe you need a prescription. Maybe well, you need to be over 18. I don't know, but put it back on store shelves. Well, well maybe you need to prove you can handle it. Yeah, that's exactly. That's essentially what Adderall is. True. Uh, uh -huh. It's the same. <laughs> 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 it's it's not as near as strong, of course, like per size. Uh, but it is a stimulant that's derived like the same chemical process in the body, uh, which is the reason uh, people will find out they have ADHD in college because they'll do cocaine and be like, "Oh, this is cool." I'm like, I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's how people figure out they have an issue. I did my homework today. <laughs> you imagine being the person who does cocaine, and as soon as you realize you're okay, it's just, oh no. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't tell so me. So that's what that is. You, you take a hit, uh, and you're I like, ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> this is what it's like. Yeah, I remember oh. uh, there was someone, I think it was on 4chan. They posted, they're like, I did coke at a party last night and finished, like, three essays that were due. It feels pretty cool. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, maybe talk to your doctor about that. <laughs> uh, see, we need to bring it back. It's got to be on store shelves, man. It's just got to be available. 
I think that's gonna be the next frontier after weed is legal yeah. everywhere. Yeah, I, I do think cocaine will be the next thing after because it's the same arguments as weed. It's like you know, it's a plant. Um, you know, Once, blah blah. Once adult. Bitcoin and and cryptos finally take over the world economy, which they're of course going to do, we need to say, look, we were already buying drugs with them anyway. Just put the drugs mm-hmm. on the market. It'll be fine. I mean, you have to make the yeah. tax argument if you want politicians to legalize all this shit. It's like, hey, you don't want the cartels to make all the profit, do you? That just, mm-hmm. uh, like, good old American businesses well, sell this shit instead. I mean, that's that's actually really strong evidence. Fucking weed gets legalized in Colorado, and they just see a huge fucking spike in revenue because never of all the forget, tax on it. Never yep. forget the war on drugs was not about, like, saving people from overdosing on shit. It was all about money. The American government yep. was actually mm-hmm. just fucking buffers that the cartel was making all the profit off of, like, drugging their citizens. That's yep. all it was about. Which is the reason that CIA, the CIA started to funnel cocaine over the uh, Mexican border. Um, and like is like that. I think that was in the 70s when they sent something like it was over like 20,000 pounds, an absurd amount of uh, cocaine to Mexico. And then they just started profiting off of it. If anyone messed with them, they could just bust them for it. Uh, essentially a really big mafia. So they did the same, like, you know, they criminalize some drugs until the profitability has ended and then they'll legalize it. And that's just going to continue. They did the same thing with prohibition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With alcohol and whatever. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's a money making empire. Why, why did, why did prohibition happen? Cause I thought alcohol was always profitable. So prohibition started with a lot of, Okay. So after the Civil War, America had a cultural reset because, you know, the country had just been at war with half of the people that were now a part of the country again. So, like, industry had to completely reset, culture reset, and all that. And there were a bunch of movements, like, that's when progressivism started. So there were arguments for, like, you know, women's rights to vote and, uh, you know, the rights of, uh, like... The electoral college and stuff like that, where they Dark started to redo indeed. that. Yeah, <laughs> they started to redo the idea of the electoral colleges to be more representative of the number of people in a state. And there was more, again, progressive uh, pushes for progressivism. So one of the pushes that came during that time was an end of like people just wanted to get rid of violence in general. Like uh, it was after World War One, and they decided that crime bad, and a lot of people saw the reason crime existing as alcoholism. So you'll see a bunch of old pictures of protests that say, like, we want bars out of our town to get rid of violence. And in, you know, as we established, uh, like, we made the joke with 9-11 and the shoe bomber earlier, like, there's a problem, so they address it in the wrong way. They did not decide to address American violence with, you know, social issues or, uh, you know, not understanding mental disorders and stuff like that. They're just like, oh, the, the alcohol will ban it. Uh, <laughs> so they thought that was the solution, which made the problem a hundred times worse because now the only way to get alcohol was through bootlegging. Um, so you opened up an entirely new market of crime, and that's when the mafia came to the United States and began to take over uh, distribution of that stuff. That's whenever uh, bootlegging lines were ran all the way from Florida to Canada. Uh, so they made the underground crime syndicate of the U.S. a hundredfold what it was. True. And then yeah. whenever they decided they could tax it, if they brought it back, they got rid of Prohibition. Um, so also, when Prohibition like ended, did the, is that when the mafia and such lost their power? To, so, kind of. Whenever Prohibition ended, they just went into different facilities. And like once Prohibition ended, they started to... Uh, work underhanded in business and stuff like that um like it didn't really end the mafia's reign of terror whatever you want to call it until like the 60s or 70s um my grandfather knew jimmy hoffa um and like the mafia was still a very powerful thing at that time. I mean, this is kind of known by modern standards. But whenever the unions began to start, the mafia was running to oppose those. Uh, the mafia was working for businesses to shut up people who were going to snitch about businesses. Um, they still operated and laundered money. They just weren't as profitable, I'd say, as they were during Prohibition. Um, mm. Like, you, you, like the, the number one people 
who were mad that uh, Prohibition ended were the crime organizations because now they couldn't make money off of selling yeah. it illicitly. Yeah. So. Well, that's, mm-hmm. that's why I was asking. I was just curious if it, it – like it sounds like it would have the same effect on the cartels if like a lot of um, – you know, drugs yeah. are made legal. They would lose their well, money. Also, as money just like with the cartels and uh, illegalizing weed, like when they, I think during Prohibition, that was also when liquor became much more popular of an alcohol form to drink because you get, you know, if you have to smuggle shit, you might as well smuggle liquor instead of beer and get more bang for your yep. buck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's right. almost as if if you take something that people love and really want and buy and sell and trade and enjoy. And then you make it illegal, they're gonna find ways to get it anyway. Man, you know, that's they're gonna crazy. make video games what? illegal. Weird, dude. I think you cracked the code. We have to tell but, someone. But, but when you make when you make something illegal, it goes away. That that, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Come on. No, th- they can't be doing that. They're not supposed to. That, that's no, not happening. That's against no. the law. You're right. It's against the fucking they're, law. They're breaking the if law. If you they out would there, never. if you out there are an alcohol bootlegger. And and you're smuggling alcohol, that's against the law. Mm-hmm. Stop it. PSA. Um, I my uh, where I'm from, like Appalachia, my family's from Appalachia. A lot of my grandfathers and great grandfathers were a part of that, uh, the whole bootlegging process. And it would normally be entire towns would be in on it. Like uh, the little old Mabel who runs the country store would like store it in the back and then hand it off to d- people who would deliver it up north. Um, so like, what are you going to do? You're going to arrest an entire city <laughs> because they're not <laughs> yes. supposed to be making moonshine in their bathroom? Like, come on. <laughs> Turn it into a prison city. Wall them in. <laughs> Just encircle them with walls, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just <the> giant walls. <laughs> Just throw the Put a walls fucking up. big dome on it like that television show. <laughs> so they can't get out. I like that. I like the good old human instinct and spirit of just like telling the government, whatever. I'm still gonna do it. Well, it sounds like yeah. it brought a lot of people together. And if it weren't for the uh, mafia capitalizing on it, it might have been a wholesome experience. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the Just real bootlegging business. was the, maybe yeah. the real bootlegging was the friends we made along. The yeah, way. I think so. <laughs> well, isn't, it isn't, like isn't that, that whole time. thing? Isn't that whole thing in bootlegging also how we got NASCAR? Yes. Yeah. Pe- yeah, people would soup up their cars to run away from the cops. Yeah, God, that's really. Oh, is that what the Daisy Duke thing yep. is? Mm-hmm. So whenever uh, bootlegging ended, they were like, well, we have all these super fast cars. So they decided to start racing them, and that's where NASCAR came from. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I didn't know that. So you can thank Prohibition for one good thing, NASCAR. Yep. You're welcome. Is that what yep. the Dukes because- of Hazard is? Is that, like, based around that time? Yeah, well, the Dukes of Hazard set in the, I think, I think I want to say 70s. Uh, and it's just, like, a group of, I think they bootleg in that show. I know they run from the cops all the time. But, like, before then, you know, cars were a new thing. No one ever thought about souping them up to go faster until you needed to run from the cops. Um, So then, once they're done with that, they're like, well, I guess we'll just keep on doing this. (laughs) Did we ever soup horses up, like horse carriages, to make them go faster? Uh, I mean, that's what chariots were. Yeah, I guess chariots, yeah. Yeah, they went pretty fast comparatively. Yeah. there were there's some like funny stories whenever chariots were being invented of like armies trying to make these super heavy impenetrable chariots, and then uh, they would like run them across a swamp and everyone died because the chariots just sink. <laughs> <laughs> well, but also uh, if you make the chariot, you can make it as much of a tank as you want as long as the horse is still a living thing. You can just shoot the horse, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, well, chariots. They, they didn't have guns horse. back in the fucking Roman times. It's, yeah. Well, whatever point is, you're just basically making yourself a tomb. If an enemy army wants to fucking capture you, all they have to do is... <laughs> yeah, <horses>. true. <laughs> <laughs> you come pre-packaged. <laughs> <laughs> Gift wrapped even, yeah. <laughs> it would be cool if they made, like, horse armor then. Yeah, they did, they did make, make horse armor. Yeah, they did. I know the knights had horse armor. I don't know if there was any, like, Roman times... Maybe wouldn't it have what, wouldn't it have had, like lowered the mobility of the horses by a significant amount? Yeah, but yeah. it also made them impenetrable to arrows, which was their main concern. Because um, if like you were like riding a cavalry unit, 
uh, that had chariots, and then all your horses get wiped out by one arrow barrage. I mean, good luck. No, just one arrow. <laughs> just, just one <laughs> arrow. One really <laughs> skilled shot. Yeah. <laughs> A triple collat. Uh, just all bounces at once. off them. Yeah, one for the montage reel. <laughs> <laughs> It's just it's just one archer with a bunch of arrows on one bow fires that, them all at yeah. once. <laughs> Fucking he's arrow, he's that arrow shit. has like <laughs> weed skins on it and shit. He's just stoned out of his mind too. Do you, do you think that like at, maybe at the range they'd get like a I don't know a double target in one bow and they'd be like, "Mom, get the parchment." <laughs> get the parchment. <laughs> Record this. Ar- <laughs> <laughs> recording it is like wow. a fucking six month ordeal where they have to engrave it into fucking <laughs> tablets <laughs> son this achievement's amazing when this photograph develops in eight to twelve months we'll look back <laughs> on it and smile God, people are so dumb then and that's like <laughs> That's the best they thought it was going to get to. They didn't think it was going to get better. That's that, like oh, that's what they man. thought life was going to be. We're fucking cavemans in that regard, man. We're looking yeah. at shit like uh, like algorithmic generated photos and fucking all sorts of shit like AI and virtual and we're reality. We're like, it. damn, dude, this is the pinnacle of technology. This is the latest, coolest, greatest shit ever. And yet in a hundred years, we're going to look like disgusting fucking cavemen. Oh, yeah. And yeah. don't I've even set this oh, before. Oh, right. Humanity... Humanity will never be emancipated from its lowly origins until we figure out to not shit anymore. I am so tired of the fact that we still have to poop. We need the technology to eliminate this fucking process. What a strange line of like accomplishment. Like Dude, that's I, the defining. Uh, Wendigoon, if I could shoot down UFOs, the first thing I would do is like check out their toilets and like what technology they use to not shit. <laughs> That's the what if they, I they have worse shitting technology than us? It's just like a hole in the fucking UFO that they shoot. <laughs> it's just an outhouse in the back of the ship. <laughs> Wouldn't that be disappointing if like we yeah. found a UFO and we were like, oh, time to see what tech these guys have. And it turns out they just built like a really big catapult back on their planet. <laughs> <laughs> they just got absurdly lucky. The spaceship just- is made out of wood. <laughs> we, uh, we think he's speaking. We think he's speaking speaking this advanced incredible alien language but he's really just doing his version of like ooh ooh uh, ooh uh, uh. ooga booga aliens oh man with like big clubs yeah, and like fucking an loin cloths <laughs> we finally translate their language and all he's saying is like me hungry me want sex <laughs> Me like we're, meth. We're, we're like, we, they've adapted beyond the need. <laughs> me <laughs> like meth. <laughs> me like meth. That would be so mean uh, to get an alien hooked on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly. If we lived in the 1960s, that's the first thing that the fucking government would do if that Roswell crash was real. You know what we, LSD we did to hooked him. it on LSD. Yeah. You know what's a depressing thought? What if Earth is basically just the highway truck stop and they just come here to shit? Like, this is just their toilet. <laughs> 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 just shit and leave. Like, you yeah. know how on the sidewalk you'll see a dog turd and you'll be like, oh, how discourteous. You could have at least picked that up, lady, or whatever. But what if it's actually alien shits and no one just gives it a thought? It's not like we dissect it and run DNA tests on it. <laughs> They're just that dropping shit from the sky overhead. That's all. There's Area so many possible is. what ifs, man. What if what if the first like extraterrestrial contact we had was with an alien the size of a thumb? He's the size mm. of a thumb. He's a little green man. He's running around and he's like, "I come in peace," and then he's just immediately flattened by a Honda Civic. And <laughs> no one ever knew. How, we would have no way of ever knowing this happened. That's the start That's of an intergalactic war against Honda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're all the size of a thumb, so his whole planet shows up and they get flattened by a semi truck. <laughs> like, that, that's the plot. No of, one even uh, knows. Uh, that was their what's whole that? Invading Hitchhiker's force. Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, in the first book, they think that cars are the superior life form on Earth. <laughs> Because they're like, it's fascinating. They're bigger than the humans. They transport them. The, those books are so fucking good, man. I've read the first, I think, four, and they are they are so good. I recommend anyone listening to check those out. They're so fucking funny. Yeah. I think it's the second one that starts out with that line, like, 
in the beginning the universe was created. This has been widely regarded as a bad decision and looked down upon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just so it's they're just so well written. I still love the uh what is it the I think it's the third book where they have a band that's so metal that the only way people can listen to them is on another planet in an underground bunker because they're so loud. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they end all of they end all of their concerts by crashing a car into the sun. <laughs> it's so fucking cool. It's so cool. <laughs> uh, I gotta reread those. Those were great. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'm thinking about getting an alien hooked on meth now. I'm gonna be thinking about that for a while. <laughs> See what happens. That, that, that's how we get peace. Like they come here to kill us, like Mars attacks, yeah, we, and they try turn them blue into crystal. Yeah, yeah, they try crystal. Yeah, and they're the like, modern... we, these guys are great. <laughs> the they just come back peace. asking for more. <laughs> you guys got any more uh, meth? Area fifty one just becomes a dispensary. <laughs> we just have like an intergalactic <laughs> Silk Road to so just keep selling the universe drugs. <laughs> Oh, that, that would actually be pretty cool. Silk Road. That would be that cool. Would what if our awesome. natural resource on Earth isn't like oil and whatnot? It's just drugs, and no one else has them on their planets. They would make us so special. Yeah, they have rich. no way to like alter their mindscape or anything. So they're just fucking squares, fucking nerd aliens, and they don't it's know how to that's a... aliens. <laughs> and they come here, and we teach them how to party and get with cool chicks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Turns into like a college movie. That's one of the theories around, um, like, <laughs> why we haven't this? invented space travel. Yeah, that's one of the theories around space travel, because theoretically, like, with the amount of time humanity's existed, we would have been able to come up with space travel, but we as humanity also dedicate time to arts and understanding and, like, you know, um, expression. So one of the theories mm. is if another galaxy does create space travel, they probably are lacking on like the humanistic element of it so stuff like oh, yeah, drugs could aliens. honestly be the answer exactly yeah so they so actually like, well, were, they, yeah so it is theoretically possible for there to be an alien race of just nerds completely boring yes. pretty, dorks. pretty much oh, pretty man. much oh. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't that be, be so depressing? sad if they just They're came just all the way here just to correct us on something we said on the podcast <laughs> 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 just came down to fact check us yeah <laughs> oh man I come in peace but actually what Wendy Goon said is incorrect <laughs> no, <bad>. <laughs> <laughs> that's, this actually that's, made like this and then they make the best <laughs> fucking meth ever <laughs> it's like that's, the uh, aliens. Insane. that's <laughs> why the government shoots them down because they're just lame they don't want to talk yeah, to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time they fire one down, boring. <laughs> We've stopped even oh, taking their fucking cool. calls. Every time they try to what radio us. What galaxy are you from? Andromeda? No thanks. <laughs> we just ignore all their calls now. <laughs> they get here. The government's just trying to save us from disappointment. They're looking out for us. <laughs> Uh, it's the goddamn Garblaxians again. They're so fucking lame. <laughs> Garblaxians are a pretty up. cool name, though. Yeah, you'd think they'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, but imagine being the scientist sitting at, um, what is it, SETI, the search for extraterrestrial life, where they just they have these gigantic radio dishes just waiting for an alien signal to arrive. And then they get hailed by an alien, and St Steve sitting at the desk is like, nah, don't invite them. He doesn't drink. They're no fun. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> oh, Steve. <laughs> Classic Steve. Classic Steve. So, we, we've talked about cults on this uh, this show before, right, guys? Andrew? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Kaya? I love cults. Yeah. You Most say we have a bit of a Leto's cult. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could call that a cult. He does. But I was watching uh, some of Wendigoon's content recently to get a feel for him after he had been recommended ad nauseum. And I watched a video <laughs> on a, a cult called Ant the Anthill Kids, I believe mm -hmm. it was called. Yep. Man, that's fucking wild. That's probably the scariest cult I've ever heard of. And I had never heard the name before until that video. Give us a rundown. Can you, yeah, Kai and uh, Andrew, have you guys heard of them I before? So I no. will say, I'm going to actually add this to my watch list right now because I love fucking cults. Oh, cool. uh, so, so give us a rundown, but don't spoil any of the juiciest bits because I'm probably going to watch this video now. Okay. All right. So 
the short version is that it was began by a guy named Rock Thoreau, who in Canada, I think it was around the Ontario region, um, he started to like earn the favor of people who were like low and not doing well in life. I think he primarily like snooped around bars. And he claimed he was like a semi-Christian religious leader. Like, I think he talked about Jesus and God. Um, and he would, like, essentially invite them to church, which was just his church teaching his own doctrine. But like I said, he specifically picked out people who were not doing well. So after he got a decent following of, like, 20 people, he began to teach them that the end times were coming, uh, which is seen in a lot of cults. However, his version of it said that he himself, Roche Thoreau, was the... Not the Antichrist, but like, not even the second coming. He was like the protector or the forerunner of the second coming of Christ. Uh, and therefore, they need to shield themselves from the world. So he took them to this essentially mountain secluded area and began to tout himself as the forerunner of God and how God's coming back and how they need to be prepared for it. So he started to do things with them. Like he said he needs to reproduce so he would have children <laughs> with all the move, women yeah. in the cult. Classic. Yeah. Um, so far, so good. He said that since he knew best, he needed to um, approve everything the rest of them did. So, like, from eating to even if a man wanted to sleep with his wife, they had to get permission from Roche uh, <laughs> for every subsequent time that it happened. Um, they had to, uh, they could only read things that were approved by him. Uh, they it's could a only play cult. games that were approved by him. And the I won't give the details because that's where, like, the brutalness... Of, and it honestly was a cult. cult, cult, cult. Um, <laughs> if they stepped out of line in any way, like, disobeyed him, he resorted to extreme violence uh, in order Ooh. to put them back in line. But he had built such a reputation with them as, like, a caring father figure that whenever he was done with the violence and anger, he would switch back into his polite mode and everyone would trust him. Uh, and that went on for uh, several years. I want to say over a decade. So it was it, God damn. The way yeah. you uh, talked about it in the video, the stories that you, you talked about were just so horrifying and so visceral and so disgusting. Can you give it's one like, example? You're teasing Yeah, us. so um, in one case... A woman had run away, uh, like tried to escape, and then the men from the cult found her as she was escaping and brought her back. And uh, like with everyone gathered around, Roche dragged her, I think it was into like a kitchen area, and uh, cut her arm off with an axe. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> threw her on the ground, one handed the axe, cut her arm off, and then like a while as she was bleeding, he like wrapped it up and then started like shushing her and holding her and caring for her. like as if it's a father who oh, spanked nice. a child like this is some horror movies. movie shit yeah it what genuinely God. sounded like a horror movie and yeah what yeah. what i didn't understand at first is how people can be led into this situation and i think that with other cults obviously but like this one is just it like it genuinely sounds like a horror movie so when they're like exposed to those kinds of things it always makes me think well why aren't they leaving or why aren't like Stockholm this syndrome. is horrifying yeah and desperation uh, but, but um wendigoon made the point in the video uh about the the frog in the boiling water metaphor and i thought that was a really good way of looking at it in that it yeah. never starts that yeah. way it always starts so wait, why are they very sorry, simple why were they called what was it the children of the ants they were called uh, the ant hill kids so oh, okay. the reason they were called that, uh, that's actually the name they were given by a lot of outsiders because they built this entire cabin in the mountains and they would come into town whenever they needed to buy resources or supplies, which there's a whole story in itself of how they would like keep members of the group quiet whenever they went out to town. Um, but people from the town would see like this group who always moved together and then if anyone saw them on the mountaintop, they would just be moving around like ants building houses. <laughs> so the locals started to call them the mm. annual kids for that reason. And also there was a lot of children too, because again, Roche was having kids with them. Um, as a matter of fact, after I made that video, I was contacted by one of those children um, oh. who said that she was a daughter of Roche 
who um, her mother was uh, seduced into the cult. And um, she said, if I recall correctly, the email said that um, I got my facts right. And this was interesting uh, and something that I've made a point not to do in future videos. She did not like how at the end I said this is something that the people will probably never get over. Um, and she said she didn't appreciate that because she felt her life was not defined by the way she was born. And I was like, oh, well, that's, that's an interesting point. I won't say that in future videos. Uh, but it was so wild because that was the first time I covered an event like that. And then to have one of the people message me. And in future videos, that happened too. I did a video about uh, Munchausen syndrome. Um, about parents who essentially force a sickness on their children. Um, mm -hmm. And one of those children contacted me from that uh, and Oof. said, like, they enjoyed the video or whatever. So I that's thought been Munchausen one of the was, like, things. fairly, um, well, not super common, but it, it's not, like, rare or anything, right? It's not super rare. Uh, so there's two different kinds of Munchausen. There's Munchausen syndrome, which is whenever someone essentially feigns an illness or convinces themselves that they have it to the degree they start showing symptoms. My video was on Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which is whenever someone forces an illness on someone else, most mm -hmm. often to receive attention or money for it. No, um, usually it's their and kids. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, normally it's their kids. Uh, there's some cases where it's like a spouse, uh, but most often children. And that one is pretty rare. At least the diagnosis of it's pretty rare. Because it was, it, I, I, I don't know anything about this, but I would assume it because there's a lot of like manipulation that goes into it. It's not self-imposed. Is yeah. that why it's super rare? Yeah, it, it's also see. So there could be cases where people arguably have, and this is one of the things I talk about in that video. It's really hard to nail down as necessarily a mental illness. Uh, to the degree that in, like, I think it's in Australia and the UK, it is not considered a mental illness. Uh, because, like, what's the line between someone is just using someone else to get money? Or someone has a mental disorder that makes them use someone else to get money? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's kind of, like, hard to distinguish, which is why it doesn't get diagnosed a ton in, like, the US. Um, but... It most often involves, for one, you not only have to keep a lie up 24-7 to the degree that you have to keep the lie going to the person you're imposing the lie on, but that person also has to have such a degree of mental trauma that they either don't know you're the one doing it or they also keep up with the lie you're giving them. So it's like or, very rare to find that. Or again, it's a literal child who just doesn't know anything and doesn't know any better. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the most. Know, I, I, Go ahead, sir. No, I was gonna say I assume that's also why it's just so rare uh, diagnosed because it is a crime they're basically committing and they're hiding it. They're trying not to get yeah. caught actively. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, the most famous case of it is Gypsy Rose Blanchard, which is where the there's a whole series about it on I think Hulu, um, where the mother was like giving her kids uh, like medication saying that she had like, I think diabetes among other issues. Um, she had shaved her head to make people think she was going through like chemotherapy. She carried around an oxygen tank and gypsy was given so many drugs and unnecessary procedures at a young age that she did, st she did start to become ill from the side effects of those procedures. Like uh, she didn't have any teeth or like her teeth were rotting out because she was taking medication for, I think it was like, it wasn't cancer. It was like some kind of bone marrow disease. And that meant, oh no, it was her seizure medication. Her mom said she had seizures. So she was taking seizure medication that caused her teeth to rot out. Uh, so then that gave her the appearance of being sickly. So people just went along with it. However, Gypsy, I think for several years knew she wasn't actually sick. She just didn't know how to stand up to her mom. So that story's wild because the way it ends is Gypsy uh, talked to a guy online who she convinced to come over to her house and kill her mother. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get out of it. Yeah. Like that, that story's pretty wild. But yeah, So did that uh, happen? Yeah, that really happened. Um, Gypsy. No, Rose, I mean, like, did the murder happen? Like, did, did yes, he yes. go through? Yes. Oh. He showed up at the house, um, pulled a kitchen knife, and then stabbed the mom to death. And then he took Gypsy. Also, before this, Gypsy uh, was forced to sit in a wheelchair. Her mom told people she was crippled, uh, but she could walk just fine. So 
he comes and gets Gypsy. And it's actually a weird story because the police thought that what happened is someone broke into the house, killed the mom, and kidnapped the daughter. So they were on the lookout for a crippled young girl. So several police and people who were looking for Gypsy passed her in life, but didn't know it was her because she was walking around. Uh, and they oh, just assumed she could walk. Yeah. So well, like, I think seen at, at the end the of the unusual crime. suspects. Yeah. Yeah. Where he walks um, out of the crime. <laughs> she gets out of jail. She, she got sentenced to 10 years. I think she gets out in a year or two. Uh, but he's got like jail for life. If I recall. Correctly. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Right. I thought you meant they sentenced the dead mum to 10 years in jail for one no. she's dead. <laughs> that guy should not have got received life. a sentence. I mean, if I don't know all the eh. details, but it sounds like he literally saved the person. Yeah. yeah especially because like in, in my research, uh, I'm pretty sure that guy had a mental disability of some kind. Um, he had met gypsy once previously. Uh, they like, Th they had arranged this thing to where they would go to the movie theater like Gypsy and her mom would and she would meet him there. So like they met and hooked up in the bathroom um, like while her mom was there waiting on her. Um, hmm. And then it was I think a few weeks after that he came and murdered her. I was going to say if if the mother was this controlling to the degree where she's able to impose like illnesses on her daughter. How did they even like communicate through the Internet? So her mom was super strict about the laptop, monitored everything she did. So Gypsy would wait until her mom went to sleep every night uh, and looked mm. at it. Actually, so I forgot about that other detail. The one thing Gypsy had an interest in was like, I think like Dungeons and Dragons. Like she would play it uh, like online and like uh, talk to people online. And she went to a convention for it and she had plan to hook up with a guy at that convention so she managed to get away from her mom during the convention and then her mom eventually found her in a hotel room with that guy and threatened to call the police on him because at the time gypsy was i think 19 or 20 years old but she had convinced gypsy that she was only 15 oh, so fuck yeah huh. so she tells this guy like i'll call the police this is pedophilia when it actually wasn't but the guy and gypsy do not know that she's actually 20 years old so he like screamed off and gypsy didn't say anything about it um holy shit yeah yeah that's like insane damn. what the human mind can do to a, another person the level of lies she went through and like different cover stories is absurd it, it was to the degree she was uh divorced from her husband i'm sure she was a great woman to be married to um yeah. She was divorced from her husband, and the husband wasn't allowed to see Gypsy, even though Gypsy was his daughter. So whenever the husband would call to wish Gypsy a happy birthday, the mom would say, don't tell her how old she is. She doesn't know. Like, <laughs> that bitch deserved <laughs> to get stabbed. stabbed. She really that had didn't throw off yeah. any alarm bells or anything? Uh, it probably did for the husband. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this detail. So this, the mom, I forget her name, you know, something Blanchard. Uh, she was so annoying and such an awful person that whenever she died, they cremated her body and gave it to her father. And her father flushed her ashes down the toilet. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> that is a happy ending. Based. I love it. That is a happy yeah. ending. <laughs> Everyone despised her. She was awful. Um, Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so the shit's on daddy shoes then there too. Holy fuck. She... Uh, the actual reason that she um, was in a, a gypsy was in a wheelchair, the reason her mom convinced her, is when she was seven, seven or eight, um, she was riding on the back of a motorcycle with her dad. Pretty sure it was her dad. Um, and it, just in the driveway, just like going back and forth slow. And then while they were sitting there, the bike tipped over and Gypsy scraped her knee. And from <laughs> that, her mom convinced her that she was paralyzed from the waist down. Uh, Jesus so Christ. That's Brilliant. what started the wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm it, surprised she didn't actually just break her daughter's knees to make sure. There's you ever, you ever think there were times when maybe Gypsy would stand up and be like, oh, wait, I'm paralyzed and just sit back down. <laughs> um, she did talk she has talked about an interview since then that as she grew up she would like move her leg or stand up and then immediately feel like she was doing something wrong 
and yeah. then go back. Oh, like no. she's conditioned yeah, to be paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's rough. Yeah, it's uh, her story's very sad. Um, and like I understand, you know, probably not a good idea for a guy who just murdered a woman to get off. But, like that guy got life in prison, and I'm pretty sure like he was kind of manipulated. And uh, but I mean, Gypsy. I, I don't know what the alternative would have been. Um, I'm fine with Gypsy killing her mother. I don't like she had to Me involve too, someone right. else to do it. But you yeah, know. I, I'll be, I'll say it for you. I mean, that is everything about this was fair game. That man saved that girl probably from death because that mom was sure as shit gonna keep doing this. And yeah, yeah, she had it coming. Let the guy go. We don't know. We don't know what his motives were, though, do we? Uh, yeah, to hook up with her. He was into her. <laughs> I'd, I'd also be willing to bet that lawyer, if they like, if they had a whole trial, he could argue like, well, he didn't have to kill her. He could have just taken Gypsy out of the home. He that, didn't have to yeah. murder her. That was the point yeah. they argued that like to mm-hmm. rescue Gypsy, she, he didn't have to kill her necessarily. Um, mm-hmm. I also, guess. <laughs> just because everyone wanted her dead and everyone hated her <laughs> and killing her would make everyone's lives better. He should have waited for a law to it. be passed first. They killed Gypsy's mom the, law. The defense should have yeah. just invited her father to testify. Like, yeah, she, you know, she deserved it. You should let that guy go. Now, yeah, what was wild um, I, that I still don't think there's an answer for is a couple years before all that went down where like her mom died, the local police received an anonymous call that said Gypsy is not sick. Her mother's forcing it on her. So the police investigated and like, so this is also part of the story. So Gypsy and her mom were in Louisiana during Hurricane Katrina and their house was destroyed as part of Hurricane Katrina. So they were able to get completely new identities. Uh, She fabricated hospital records and all of that. And what then the a couple years later, yeah, the police get a call that um, Gypsy is not actually sick. So that when they show up, the mom presents them with this fake identity and all these fake uh, hospital records. They had changed their name. Uh, so the police like did a full investigation into Gypsy not being sick a couple of years before it ever came out. But they I really was anything. not expecting Hurricane Katrina to be tied into the story. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This had everything. This is a wild ride. <laughs> So who call, who called in? What's no the one knows. To this day, no one knows. Uh, my theory is that it was the, the father yeah. or the Hello doctor. Father. The father or the doctor. There was a doctor. So like her mom had to keep cycling her between different doctors because if she stayed for any doctor for too long, you know, they'd eventually find out. But there was one doctor mm-hmm. who performed one test on her and then told the mother, uh, there is no medical reason this girl shouldn't be able to walk. Uh, she should be totally fine. And the mom, like, threatened to call the police on him or report him to the hospital or something. Um, And then she left. And I think it was after that the police received an anonymous call. So I think it was either the father or the doctor who called that in. This is so fucked up. I'm going to go. I feel like if the father were to do that, though, if he were were to take that step to call, call in, he would have done more. Like, why would he have to be anonymous in that situation? That's true. He's got some kind yeah. of connection. If I had, mm-hmm. if I had to guess, uh, what's most often seen with extreme abuse cases like that, like you know where a mom indoctrinates her daughter for years and years, the abuse probably extended farther than her daughter, and I would imagine the husband would have been afraid of her, um, for either like mm. vo- for like emotional reasons or physical reasons. There are some allegations that she would beat her daughter. Uh, I didn't look into how true those were. Um, or at least I couldn't find information on how true those were. So because the father didn't say anything for all those years while watching his daughter be abused, for one, he was a bit of a coward, in my opinion, for not saying something. Uh, but he was probably scared as well, if I had to guess. Hmm. Yeah, there's no way to know for sure unless he, he talks about it, I would assume. Yeah. yeah, I know he was part of the trial uh, of Gypsy and the guy, but I don't know precisely what he said about her. Uh, I imagine, again, her own father flushed her down the toilet, so. Yeah, I don't think she was a very good <laughs> Oh, nice oh, person. I forgot, I forgot. This keeps going, Jesus. The, yeah, the dad always hated her uh, and eventually flushed her ashes. Because Keep in mind, this is Gypsy's granddad, right? I, I forget yep. what Gypsy's mom's name was. It was like Mary or something. Anyway, the mom visited her father one time, and her father had remarried to a new woman rather than, Mm -hmm. you know, um, Gypsy's mom's original mother. So 
This stepmom apparently did not get along with Gypsy's mom at all. Imagine that. And mm-hmm. then apparently, while they were staying at their house, Gypsy's mom poisoned her own stepmother. Uh, oh, <laughs> like spiked her food and tried to kill her. Uh, so Attempted they, murder. Yeah, they kicked them out what? after that. This woman and is a like fucking a year later, she dies. Yeah, she was mom, awful. The woman who forced a girl to be a paraplegic would poison somebody? That's insane. <laughs> that's that's, that's such a no way. <laughs> it doesn't sound no, like It's wait, a little wait, far wait, 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 yeah. wait, all of her other stuff to this point has been extreme manipulation. Actually poisoning someone is like way more direct, I would say. I do think she actually... Okay, so... One of the common things that are seen in Munchausen by proxy cases is salt poisoning. So if someone gets a huge salt spike in their body, it will cause their kidneys to start to shut down. It will cause liver problems and everything else. So well, like it'll like make shit. someone sick. Yeah. But <laughs> it'll make someone sick, but it won't be physically seen on like a test because all they'll see in the body is that the saline levels are high or the salt levels are high. Um, so that's not like evidence of poisoning. So there's been several cases of parents poisoning their children with salt to get that Munchausen by proxy effect. And it's believed that Gypsy was one of those. So she was uh-huh. in fact poisoning her child. She just wasn't using a literal poison to do it. This is upsetting. What a coward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, a, what, a, what a fun note to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, shit, Jesus. honestly, for something that I'd never heard about, that was extremely interesting. <laughs> I, I mean, this think... whole episode has been a wild fucking ride. We've had aliens <laughs> and drugs episodes. and alcohol bootlegging and airport yeah. terrorism <laughs> and now this. And Wendigo this, needs to be a regular a roller coaster. I have to sit down after that one. <laughs> I, I like a lot of weird stuff and dark, depressing stuff. So happy to share anytime. Uh. <laughs> yeah, right I mean, I, I had a full list of I had a full list of things to ask you about, like because I, I was going through some of your videos and stuff, and it's all just so fascinating. How do you find this stuff? Uh, I'm a weird person. Uh, <laughs> a lot of my interests have always been in like the weird conspiracy theories, supernatural cults, what have you. Um, and I just, like, enjoy those topics, so I just think to myself, yeah, that'd be cool to talk about, so I researched. Like, I always thought Munchausen by proxy was interesting, so I decided to just research some cases and make a video on it. Uh, same with the cults mm-hmm. and conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I'm planning to do uh, some videos about PSYOPs coming soon, so that should be pretty Ooh. cool. Ooh, uh, nice. Yeah, like, uh, there's some weird ones in history that no one knows about. Uh, like, an example... Um, the Persian Immortals got their name. <laughs> what? Beca- what? What's that? I've never even heard of oh, it. Oh, uh, okay. So, like, during the early Greek ages, like, Spartan Athens times that people think of. Jackson, have you seen 300? Oh, <laughs> oh. Were those the Persian Immortals? Believe it or not, Persia was a real place. <laughs> <laughs> this might blow your mind. I don't know. Yeah, they even have a prince. Uh, he does parkour. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's pretty good uh, the Persian immortals got their name because after battles they would remove their dead from the battlefield which gave the impression oh, to the enemy yeah, right. forces that's that none clever. of them had died yeah, so I mean imagine, it's clever but that would have been time consuming people well, would have seen the bodies you come to a battlefield and it's just your guys that are dead like that think really about smart. the psychological effect of like oh now I have to go fight against those guys uh another one is i'm pretty sure it was alexander the great whenever he was conquesting out east uh if they ever had to leave a camp he carried these giant pieces of armor so like chest plates that were like you know four or five feet tall uh and they would leave it behind at the campsite so if the enemy (laughs) came through the camp they would think that alexander's army was composed of giants and that's (laughs) that is also brilliant (laughs) i love this yeah there's a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, I think it. I think it was also the Persians. Maybe not the Persians. When they were fighting the Egyptians, they would uh, tie cats to the front of their shields, because the Egyptians <laughs> considered cats to be a holy animal. Oh, true. So they wouldn't strike the shield for fear of uh, killing Aww. the cat. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of weird stuff like that. That's pretty cool in history. That's mean. That was nice of the Egyptians not to kill the cats then. I don't know how effective that was. Uh, (laughs) I know that was their concept going. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if that worked out. How did they train um, the cats to stay on the shields? I think they just duct tied tape. them down. Yeah, duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> essentially. Cats I don't think. The, I'm cats. pretty sure the cats weren't happy with the uh, circumstance. No, they were dying um, for their country. Which, ah, oh, man, there was one general. I can't remember who it was, but he carried giant uh, curtains into battle because he had elephants. To do a magic show. And the, oh. Uh, no, the, so I think he was attacking Greece. I'm pretty sure, whatever general this was. And he had giant curtains in front of the war elephants. And then whenever they got to the front line, they would drop the curtains because the people of Greece had never seen an elephant before. So whenever the enemy army shows up and a curtain drops and there's a 20 foot tall beast with horns, they thought they were fighting like the devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Awesome. That actually it was like, like seeing an alien in real trick. life. Yeah. 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 yeah pretty, they, I mean, like if you never saw, uh, I mean, at Greece, the biggest thing they had was like, you know, big dogs and stuff. And then you see an elephant for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> have they ever seen curtains before? <laughs> they really That's what they were actually afraid yeah. of. <laughs> Screaming before the elephant they're even so shows up. Soft and silky. Well, no, <laughs> uh, they were there. Now they're not. What happened? They got smaller. <laughs> Where did they go? They put their hands in front of their eyes, and I can't see them. Oh, is that the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a bunch of weird stuff like that. Uh, that stuff went, like, a ton of it happened in Vietnam, uh, and there's even some of it still happening today, so yeah, uh, warfare's weird, but, I'm, mm -hmm. like, like, but that's how most of my video topics go, I'm like, that's a weird thing, let's, uh, let's make a video about it, so. It's so fascinating, endlessly fascinating channel, I'm really gonna I, dig into it I appreciate that, a lot. thank mm -hmm. you very much, it means a lot. No. Um, but I think that's going to come to the end of this episode because it is getting extremely early over here in Australia, so I do need to sleep. <laughs> We've been going um, for over two hours. Yeah, I think this is the longest episode, fun. honestly. It might be. Yeah, is it really? It was one of my favorites in a long while. Oh, oh, oh that, that's you so sweet. You have been an Thank incredible guest, so man. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. I, I would this. be more than happy to come back anytime. I really appreciate oh, yes. that. Thank you. All right, we let's will not definitely get take away. you up. No, no. <laughs> you're not getting a we'll dock you in for the next 50 weeks if we can. <laughs> but, but for real, I had a great time. Thank you guys very no, much. No, please, uh, shout, shout out your stuff as well. Where can people find yeah. you? Uh, so my uh, YouTube channel is Wendigoon. Just here on YouTube. I'm Windagoon on Twitter as well. It's really the only sites I use. I will give a shout out. Um, the writer and directing crew who did the SCP movies on YouTube. Uh, I am currently writing a stalker film that will be shown on Evan Royalty's channel whenever it's released. So check out Evan Royalty for that because that's what I'm working on. But yeah, other than that, uh, you can just find me on Windagoon. So okay. yeah, and awesome. everyone, please seriously go check him out if you haven't already. Although with the amount of requests we received for you to come on, <laughs> I am sure everyone has seen you at this point. So, but yeah, seriously, go check him out. His his videos are incredible. Really, really They're good fun. stuff. Yeah, uh, and mm -hmm. thank, thank you thank again you for much. joining us, man. Thank Absolutely. you for joining us for these it two hours. It's been be magical. Uh, you guys have been fantastic. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, and thank, thank you. you to everyone at home for listening mm -hmm. to this episode of the official podcast. If you want to support the show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash the official podcast. Kai and myself have been watching the Halo TV series, so you can listen along mm -hmm. with us. we got episodes okay. up frequently. There's early <sighs> access and bonus episodes as well. Every week, and unfortunately. Yeah, it's miserable. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Um, um, yeah, the oh, things we go quick. through for updates um the stories at official.men email address you can still send your stories uh jackson and i are going through them we're still gonna do that quick note though put like a catching headline on your email it's you know it'll make it easier for us to actually give it attention don't just send us something like fun story <laughs> 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 and but yeah, yeah you. You, rate us rate us on iTunes and Spotify and all that good stuff you know the drill by now um, mm -hmm. yeah thanks for listening and we'll see you guys next week bye yep. bye 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 <laughs>